And short, and he had the shot. What a goal! This fellow is unstoppable. Robin Shaw, who else? And welcome to another special edition of the official EFL podcast and the man with one of the most special celebrations that EFL has seen in recent years joins us. The man who played for Cardiff City, West Brom, Nottingham Forest, just a few of the teams he played for. Robert Earnshaw joins us. Robert, welcome to the show, first of all. I just want to start by asking you, how are you coping with with the current situation yourself? Obviously, things in the world are a bit strange at the minute. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thanks for having me, by the way. Um, this is nice. It's nice to, to just to get to speak and, and talk a little bit. And, Our pleasure. But, uh, Our pleasure. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm doing well. Um, adjusting. I think you have to uh, just adjust to what the new situation is. And, uh, but to be honest, I, I, spend a, I spend a lot of time isolating myself away to, to do other things anyway. So, Part of it is 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 kind of normal because I, I like to just switch off from the world at, at least a few hours in the day where I get to to zone into um, my priorities. I I, I kind of call them. Um, but it's been fine adjusting, keeping busy, keeping um, you know, kind of putting certain things that sometimes is in the background, uh, putting them in the in the foreground a little bit. You know, the world is on pause, so. It's unique and different, and um, you know, it's it's something I think we all adjust into. But um, no, I've been fine. I've been good. I I think uh, it's something that um, you know we we'll all talk about in ten years and remember that time where <laughs> you know I mean we don't know how long it's going to be, so we'll see. But I mean, we can only adjust and and adopt the new rules and the new things that um, that everybody, obviously, uh, the government and everything is suggesting. So. We'll see how long it goes for, but um, I'm hoping everybody else is healthy, well, and trying to do their best. You said before we were on air, actually, that your mother's a, a care worker now as well. I'm guessing that that makes you a bit more you know, passionate about the current situation to, to make sure people follow, follow the rules and follow the guidelines and, you know, and we protect you know, the NHS because, well, obviously we saw you did that message for the EFL a few weeks ago as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. My mom's a care worker. She works in a care home. Um, I mean, she she works uh, really night shifts. You know, nine times out of ten, which is uh, she's extremely hard working. You know, so it's uh, she's there. She's um, you know twelve hour shifts, and and um, you know the things that uh, she tells me about and that w- how everything goes is is very very tough, and um, it's uh, at, at times dangerous, and especially at this time, even more so. Than normal, so um, yeah. I mean, yeah. We talk about NHS is, but also we have to think of the others, like you know, people like my mum, who are care workers, care homes, you know, um, and uh, people who are taking care of people, people who are um, are doing their bit um, in other ways um, than directly with NHS, directly in you know, first thought is hospitals, things like this. You know, there's other areas as well, branching off that that um you know people doing a bit so yeah my mom's doing that and she's uh she's extremely extremely hard working and and doing what she can and uh, she's doing a great job yeah but obviously you're already proud of your own mother aren't you but i mean in the current situation i'm guessing you know somehow you're even prouder aren't you oh yeah yeah incredibly yeah because you know especially now you know i've been back um being back in the uk now for a few months now and um you know i've got to see her day to day and and really see um you know what she's kind of going through uh, and it's a lot you know they they get checked they get you know they have to be careful of every little tiny little thing um you know and um you know we want them to get the the as much support as possible and um i mean she's great because uh you know even even uh you know even the little things that you know it's uh sometimes i'm i'm, I'm very very proud of her and uh and um, you know, just to to see sometimes you kind of stand back and think, wow, you know, that's it's it's incredible, you know. She, uh, but she she's nonstop. That's her passion. That's what she's done for a long time, and um, and she keeps on. And uh, even at this time, there's no there's no change of speed, you know. <laughs> there's there's no um, like 
you know, you know, maybe I could do it. It's like, okay, got to do this, got to do that, got to do it. And she goes and goes and goes. So yeah, I'm very proud of her. And um, I think everybody else as well, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people like that. There's a lot of people um, in that situation as well and doing their, doing great, great work. And, and I'm guessing, you know, your mum and yourself have always had an interesting upbringing, haven't you? You know, coming from, from Zambia initially. Um, can, can you just tell us about that, that sort of, that journey you went on when, when you were a kid growing up until the age of nine, I believe you were there. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I've got a, a bit of a unique, I, I, I'm not really, I guess, you know, never really get asked too much about it and, or talk too much during my career. But listen, I, I, yeah, everybody always thinks I was born in Wales and everything, but I, I wasn't born in Wales. I grew up in Wales and it's my adopted country and it's where I grew up and it's where, you know, I, I call home now, but, um, I was actually, I was born in Zambia in Africa. Uh, my dad was English. Dad moved over there, met my mom where he obviously before me met my mom in Zambia. He, uh, he was a, a coal mine manager and, um, he was working over there, met my mom. Obviously, you know, I came along, I was born in Zambia. Uh, we actually lived there for a few years and then I moved to Malawi. I lived in Malawi as well, uh, which is one of the next countries over in Africa. Um, we stayed there for a few years. My dad passed away when I was nine and that's how we actually ended up, uh, moving to, to UK. So, um, I've had a, a crazy, but unique and completely different upbringing and, and young life really, because, you know, I was speaking, you know, different languages and I was exposed to so many different things, you know, boarding school, normal school, we playing football and, you know, with plastic bags, barefoot, um, you know, I mean, plastic bags that we used to make the footballs out of like uh, plastic bags and like string. And, um, and, you know, we make the footballs, out, loads of them. It turns, you know, it, it, we get it round and then, and then we play with that. We, you know, we weren't going to the shop buying, buying footballs. That, that's how we played football. Um, you know, just things like that is, it's one thing. Um, but yeah, those are the those are the things that um, kind of my my early early life and being exposed to so many different different things and people and uh, situations as well. So uh, anyway, for when I was nine, my dad passed away. Uh, my mum had family over in Wales. Uh, she had an older sister in Wales, who she was close to. She wanted to be, live closer to 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 her and um and also because my dad was from from the uk as well and um you know things like education you know so many other factors that kind of came into it my mom wanted to live in the uk as well and bring us all over and um you know we we ended up coming over to uk for relief to to try and um you know uh, set ourselves up for the future kind of thing and 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 um I really uh, grew up here and uh, grew up in wales and um and then obviously, you know, as you kind of get a bit older and grow up a little bit and um, you start to get exposed to different things, including football. Uh, just tell us, I mean, you mentioned, you touched on it there, but your father passing at such a young age and then having to make that move to, to an, a new country. How, how difficult was that for, for you at the time? Or is it something that you sort of block out maybe a little bit now? Obviously, you're only nine years old at the time. Uh, I mean, not block out, but like, um, I think it's always, always, um, in, in the forefront. I think it's always, it's always something that, um, I always remember those things. I always remember those situations. I, uh, I, I, ne I never, I don't think, um, you know, I'm not one of these people that, uh, is kind of a, uh, you know, a, it, it's throwaway, you know, it's, it's you, you're perfectly aware of your past perfectly aware of situations and experiences that you've been in, but also you're moving forward, you know? So those are still influences are still really part of your now. And, um, you know, those things are, you know, my dad passing when I was nine, I, I was a kid, I didn't know any, anything. And, and you kind of have this situation where it just wrecks your life. Really. It's, it's difficult. I remember it was difficult. I remember it was difficult moving to UK. I remember it was a change. I remember it was completely different. Um, I knew of UK, you know, because my dad was over here. And, um, apparently I came when I was a real baby, but I can't remember it. But really moving over when I was nine, I was like, wow, this is completely different. And you, you're looking around and it's like so, so different. And uh, even things like, I remember 
you know, we were on the plane and um, there's little things that you, 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 it's like um, they, they're kind of precious in a way because you don't see them. You don't, you're not exposed to them. I remember we're on the, we're on the, on the plane coming over and um, we got like a can of Coke and, uh, and it's it, it, obviously we didn't get cans of Coke in, in the UK in, sorry, in Zambia and Malawi. Um, and I was like, I kept the can because I was like, this is cool. Like, <laughs> you know, uh, just little things like that. You know, you're, you're just appreciative of so many little things that you're not, you don't have, you don't have day to day. Uh, even things like, you know, you move over and then seeing snow for the first time. Um, and you're like, you know, the sky's falling. <laughs> so, you know, things like that is, is very, very different. So there's a lot of things that were new and, you know, very different, I guess, very different. And, you know, adjusting to, to life in the UK and, and in Wales as well. But obviously you went on to play football internationally for Wales, but was there any ever thought from you, obviously with your father's English heritage, that he'd, you know, want to represent England or was it Wales all the way? <laughs> no, well, actually, um, when I was, I think it's about 16, um, so I, I mean, I was lucky. I was, I was very lucky. Uh, um, I got to, uh, I actually, uh, I didn't have a club until I was the last probably two or three months of just about to leave school. I was, I think I was just turning 16, 15, 16, or around that, um, and um, I, di I didn't know what I was going to do. So, you know, I remember going to school, getting prepared for my exams. And I was, you know, people asking me, oh, what are you going to do? And I didn't know what I was going to do uh, because I, I didn't know. Um, I had a couple of trials and I went training for a couple of different teams. I had a couple of trials. Uh, I remember, uh, I think Oxford, uh, I think I went one time, went training, didn't get anything there. Um, and then um, the Cardiff City uh, youth team just happened to be playing next to us uh, one day with my local team. And um, apparently the youth team coach was watching. Uh, I scored a hat-trick in the, in the first half. He was watching. And then uh, he asked me to come for trials. And um, this was like two months before he kind of picked his, his youth team for the next year. So I came for, uh, for training, um, trained a few times, um, called me into the office. Listen, you made the youth team. Um, like I was like, yes, amazing. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I wanted to do. So I was kind of lucky in one way. And then from there, I, I went on to obviously start my career at Cardiff um, and um, with the youth team. And uh, funnily enough, within that eight months, I think, I went from, I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know whether I was going to be going to sixth form. I was just about to do my GCSEs. Uh, and Eight months later, I made my debut for the first team. So I went from no, nothing to uh, your youth team, to youth team, to scoring goals in the youth team, to getting a chance in the reserve team, uh, scoring goals in the reserve team, and then made, making my debut all in that year. And um, it was incredible. And then from there, obviously, I mean, it's, that's not the end of it because you still, that's when the work begins. And that's where... The work began and that, that was my first taste of everything. So, but uh, those were the first kind of steps and how I kind of got through. And I mean, this, these days it's a little bit easier because the reason I say that is because you didn't know who the youth team coach was. You didn't know where they played. You didn't know, uh, there was no like, oh, here's an email address, <laughs> you know, or here's, here's the website. You know, there wasn't any of that. There was like, okay, you know, they heard through somebody or, the, or somebody contacted or this kid is, is good or, and they come to watch you and you don't even know, you don't even know they're there. So it's that kind of scenario. So it's not like now where, you know, sometimes, you know, you already know people are coming before the game even starts and there's an email and you don't, you know who so-and-so is and you, you can Google everything and type in everything on the, on the internet. So there wasn't any of that. So I was, I was lucky to be in a situation at the right time, right place, get picked up, and then um, go from there. But after that, then it's then it's work. And then it's it's a, a youth team uh, situation where I was trying to make it. You know, you not make it. You don't make it when you're in the youth team. You you that's that's just the beginning. And um, from the beginning, then obviously after that, then it's starting to you're trying to make a name for yourself, trying to 
make a career or trying to get to the next step? Well, you touched on it there, but I mean, in terms of your previous answer about um, the adjustment from life in, in Zambia to then coming to England and maybe you know, having the can of Coke and thinking that's interesting. But what, what was the transition then like from you know, being a park, essentially like a park local team footballer to being you know, a YTS player for, for Cardiff City? What was the transition there like? I'm guessing it was you know, a different world apart. Yeah, yeah, different. Yeah, because before that, really, I was I was playing in the street, um, and everything was, you know, open and no real structure. There's no like, you know, you go in training and there's cones and this. It's like, okay, there's a curb, there's a garage door, there's a garage door over there, and and okay, let's make teams here. There's two people. There's one, you know, person. There's twenty people let's let's play you know it's one against 19 or it's one against four and we you know we one v one and we 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 came up with our own games and we're playing and we're playing in the street for me in my mind it was i'm practicing i, I want to become a footballer i love this we're playing in the street and it's competitive you know there's there's an edge there's there's competition there it's 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 full you know and uh, that was that was my practice up until really 16. But it's not until about um, really when I started playing, when I was about 12, when I first started playing for a, a proper team, like a structured team. Um, and um, we, you know, we went training once, you know, for an hour and then played on a Saturday. Um, and then uh, that was through my friends in the street. And they were like, OK, you know, you're, you're good. Uh, you should come and play for my team. And um, I got invited. Uh, I actually went for trials. Uh, a team called Lambradic, uh, B team, by the way, <laughs> not A team. The B team in Lambradic, in in uh, near Caerphilly, where I'm from, in Wales, and um, and went for trials. And uh, they liked me. I got in with the B team. Uh, I think it was under 13s, 12s, 13s at the time. And um, and then from there, I played, uh, you know, a couple of years and then uh, just played local football, really. Uh, local football and then playing in the street. Playing in the street was the core, you know. It, 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 we, yes, we went and played on the weekend and, you know, trained once a week. But every day was we're in the street for hours and hours with the football. And, and that's, where, that's where everything is happening, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, so that's how, you know, kind of you, you make the steps. But... Um, that was that was a lot of the way I learned a lot of things, a lot of things. Not just like not just football, because it's it's not always just about football. And you learn things about football. It's learning life and you know survival and you know and you're growing up within different you know different people who teach you different things. Mm. Now, I'm guessing one of the, your main teachers as well growing up was was your mum as well, because obviously she was a footballer, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So my mum uh, back in Zambia, and it's funny, my football really started when I came to the UK. I played a little bit, but, but fun, you know, played with my friends. Like I mentioned earlier, we played, you know, at school sometimes, you know, with the plastic bags and, and everything. But um, I played way more and started to really concentrate when I came to the UK. But back in Zambia, my mum was actually a very good footballer and uh, she played with the, with, with the women's team. Uh, and then at times she also played with the men. She joined in with the men because she was very good. And um, yeah, so she was very good. And, uh, you know, she played uh, a lot of games, played with the, with the national team in Zambia as well. And um, she was, I guess, of an influence because I remember watching her. I remember going to watch her play when I was a kid, really, you know, a small kid. And I, um, I remember like small little memories here and there. Um, and, um, yeah, I guess she was, she was an influence, uh, in, in one way because she enjoyed it. But also my, uh, one of my, uh, second cousins is, uh, Kalusha Bwalia, who's, um, who was also an influence in the family because he was also, uh, you know, he was, pretty much a, I mean he was a great great footballer but he Kalusha Bwalia played for the national team he's uh, one of the one of the best if not the best uh, player that's come out of Zambia but he was also an influence because he, you know when I was a baby yeah he was an influence with my mom um, he was around the family and uh, he went on to play for PSV Eindhoven he played for the national team with Zambia he 
He went on to play for Club America in Mexico, Club Bruges in Belgium. So he had a great career, African Player of the Year. So he went on, he was an influence, I guess, around. And then later on, it wasn't a direct influence. It was, it was more when I got to the UK, it was like, I, I, I enjoyed football, but I enjoyed it even more. So it was, it was an extra factor. It was, it was an extra influence. And it was like, when I started watching it on TV, that's when I was like, oh, wow, that's, that's what I want to do. Um, and that's, that's the direction I want to go. Knowing that my mom played some football, knowing Mike, a second cousin, played football. And knowing that, uh, it's not till later on that it actually come together. I think mm. that's the best way to describe it. So, yeah, so I think my mom was, was, is, is kind of always been there and she's always enjoyed me playing and it, it was a big factor. She actually, she broke her leg. I remember watching when I was a kid in Zambia, she broke her leg and that's how uh, she, she stopped playing. But um, obviously, you know, pregnancy, kids, us having us as well, had a big factor as well in it. Mm. But uh, she was very, very good. And that's obviously where you've got the genes from, I take it, as well. Um, but as well as that, did you ever have the option of you know, being a gymnast as well? Because obviously, like we mentioned at the start with that <laughs> athletic celebration, you must have got some sort of like interest there. It's funny because it's, um, it's, it's something that I was interested in, but I, I was not never really going to be any kind of gymnast, but I, had, I loved it. I enjoyed it. But when I went to school, because it was so new, it was so, you know, and for me, it's like, oh, I, I can do that. I went and did it, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, but it was great because I loved it. I loved how, you know, the acrobats, the, the, the somersaults, the, you know, all, all the, everything, gymnastics. I thought it was amazing, you know. I just thought it was so cool to, you know, when I saw people do it. And obviously, I try and do it, but I would try and do it under you know, under the structure of school. And now when we're in school, I used to love doing it. I used to love jumping around and, you know, on the trampolines and, you know, over the bars and, you know, somersaults and, and everything, all those things I used to love in school. So I didn't, I wasn't really pursuing that. I just loved doing it. And I loved, uh, you know, just kind of having fun with it, I think. Yeah, but I was never going to pursue it. It wasn't never my passion. It is just more, I love doing it. Yeah, a bit yeah, of fun. Yeah. Um, is it something, we, we, and we talked before we, we started about your son enjoying football, is it something that he's emulating as well? Is he, is he following in you know, your footsteps with his celebration? He, uh, he, he does love a celebration already, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where, he, where that comes from, but he does love a celebration, yeah. But uh, he's, uh, he's slowly picking up the last couple of years. He's, he's 10 now, uh, 10 going on 16. <laughs> but he's... he's um, he, he enjoys football now. He uh, he's getting into it. He's starting to get into the teams. He's starting to watch football a lot. He uh, he tells me now, yeah, I want to become a footballer. And uh, but I, you know, it's it's I haven't pushed him into it, but he understands the influence and and where it's kind of come from. And you know, his friends telling him about myself playing football and his teacher as well in school. And um, and he slowly, slowly, you know, got into it naturally. But I wanted it to be natural. And if he wants to pursue that, it, you know, he's he's open. I, I help him as much as as possible. I um, try and give him tips and try and train him a little bit as well. I go to watch him play football, and he's uh, he's very good, and he knows he's very good too. So he uh, he he's, he uh, he's he's enjoying it, and he's getting into it. And um, we'll see we'll see how he goes. You know, no pressure on him. No pressure, but uh, obviously he's got his dad's footsteps to, to follow in, I'm guessing. Um, but I know that most people listening will know who Robert Earnshaw, the footballer, um, was, but how would you describe yourself in your own words, especially in those early years? Oof, good question. Um, describe myself. Um, I don't really like to, <laughs> for a start. Uh, but I think... I think one of the biggest things is, you know, um, very humble, uh, very open, um, big imagination, uh, very curious, very curious of things, you know, curious things in the world, curious to, you know, how things work, how things are, you know, uh, I, I looked and listened a lot, um, and uh, you know, I've been blessed. I, I've you know grown up in a family that 
um, I've been raised, you know, well and, you know, good manners. And you, you know what's right. You know what's wrong. Uh, you, you always give people the time of day and you always uh, respect, uh, respect people, respect everything that you do. Uh, I think that's probably some of the, the direction and probably how I kind of grew up. But um, at the same time, as also, I think one of the big things is, is no real boundaries if you know what I mean. You know what's right and wrong and everything, but it's no real boundaries in in way of thinking, the way of uh, imagination, the way of like, you know, you, you know, we're always told that you can't, you, you know, you can't do that, stop doing that, you know, whatever, but it wasn't like, uh, it, it wasn't boundaries as in, in a way of like, um, you know, going forward, how you grow up, you know, it was just a guidance of good and bad and, you know, but, no real boundaries of like, you know, you can't do that. You can't go do this and you can't be this and you can't be that. And you, you know, it was very open to pursue the direction that, that I'm kind of going, you know, um, and uh, add a lot of support, uh, add a lot of support with that. Did you just tell us as well, um, uh, when growing up, who, who would you say was your sort of footballing icon? I mean, obviously, mum's probably up there as well, but who, who would you say that you, you know, looked at and wanted to be like them? Uh, I, I, I never really wanted to be like anybody, but I always got influenced. And, you know, to your question, I think really the first moments where I remember of, like, players, um, obviously my mum, Kalusha Bwalia in Zambia, played for the national team, and, uh, so I kind of saw that a little bit. But when I got to the UK, I started watching football. I started watching football on TV. And it's obviously in the UK, it's, it's so big. It's, uh, it's, it's part of you know, people's lives. It is people's lives. And I think when I started to watch like, uh, you know, really 92 to 94, um, around that time, um, I watched a little bit of the 90 World Cup, but not too much. It was more after that. And um, but really, I remember, I remember watching, um, you know, players like, you know, when I'm in Wales, you know, and the biggest player at the time is, you know, people like Mark Hughes and Ryan Giggs at the time, Ian Rush, you know, you, you kind of see that. But I think you're always drawn to certain players that you enjoy the most, you know. And um, for me, I, um, I remember watching Barcelona. Um, and, um, you know, I grew up in watching UK football, but I, I, what people maybe don't know is I grew up watching all football. I used to watch everything from European football, La Liga to, um, you know, Bundesliga to Italian football a lot. I used to watch a lot of Italian football. Um, so I was very exposed to different things because I went out to search for it. It wasn't like, oh, it's on, it's on TV, I'll just click on. You have to search for it, you know, otherwise you, you don't see it, you know. So it was at that time. And um, I remember I used to always, you know, as soon as I got into football, I was like, I love this. I, I love watching. So I used to watch all different. So I used to see all different types of football. And then I, I, I watched Barcelona one time. And um, it was around the time where uh, they had Romario and uh, Christo Stoichkov um, around that time. And actually Guardiola uh, playing at the time as well and managed by Johan Cruyff. So I watched that, the Dream Team Barcelona and uh, that's when it was like, like, wow, like, that's, that's like a different type of football. That's like, that's like something else, you know, and I started watching them. And, um, you know, Romario, I think, was probably my favorite player at the time. And going into the 1994 World Cup, he went on to win the 94 World Cup. He was, you know, the best player in the world at the time. And I think that was when, like, really everything really went on to a different level. And I think Romario was one of my biggest influences. But at the same time, you know, I used to like people like Cantona at the time. And, you know, obviously, you know, people like Ryan Giggs and, you know, people like this, um, you know, obviously inspired me. Um, you know, but I, I remember Stoichkov and Romario, especially Romario, because he was scoring goals. And I was like, like, how does he do it? And different crazy imagination crazy different types of goals and I was like wow that's 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 what I want to do and I, I went I watched the world a 94 world cup one of my favorites but at the same time uh people like Maradona were were playing so I got exposed to Maradona so I used to love Maradona and Batistuta and people like this so um I got really influenced by so many different angles you know and you know 
people kind of maybe not heard that before a lot, really. But that's where my football comes, my football influences and people that have inspired me come from different angles, different areas, not just like strikers. So, you know, I was, wasn't like, oh, I'm only influenced by strikers. I was influenced by, you know, I used to love, you know, defender, like I said, used to watch like Italian football. I used to love, you know, I remember the Milan team. I used to watch uh, Rude Hullet, Rijkaard, um, you know, at, at AC Milan. Um, you know, so it's like people like that influenced me because I was like, wow, you know, I, I'd love to be in that, that situation. I would love to be a footballer like them. I'd love to do something close to what they can do or, you know, be in that position, play on the pitch, play in front of the thousands. You know, those things, they, they, they inspired me, you know, the, the situation and the, and the level that they, they, people got to, you know, so it's different positions and um, different people from different ways and different styles. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed not just kind of being like, oh, you know, that, you know, I want to I wanna emulate just that, you know, because it was, you know, I was curious about this. I was curious about that. And I was curious about how defenders defended you know you know goalkeeper great goalkeepers you know and things like this so it was it was a constant like an enjoyment of different angles of football but, but coming through at Cardiff though um during that time in that division uh, I imagine the football was a little bit different to, to what you saw on, on, on TV imagine it was a, a bit difficult being in the position that you played as well but you got kicked a lot didn't you oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Every every day <laughs> in training, but also every game, for sure. I, I remember I used to walk out with like kicks and scratches and ankles were in in bits. But yeah, it's obviously different, and it was very much long ball and kick the ball, run down the channels, and this. And I mean, it wasn't always my favorite because uh, I had other ideas. Um, but you play the game to what is in front of you, what the coach has to view. And, and those were the direction that I was given. So I tried to follow it and, and ad, ad, adapt to the situations and trying to use the skills. So, but yeah, it was tough. It was tough because it was also an, an, an older uh, group of men. Uh, you know, and I'm coming through at 16, 17. Um, and you know, there's only two or three other kind of, you know, two or three years older than you, but the rest are like over 25, they're 30, they're 33, you know, they're 35 and, you know, grown men, you know, and, um, a, a bigger gap than now, I think in, in kind of mentality. So it was very rough. Yeah. Every day they tried to teach you a lesson and, and it, there was no like taking it lightly in training. It was like a game. It was, they're kicking you in training because you're going to get kicked in the game. <laughs> So, you know, and if you, if you, if you drop and, and give up, well, that's on you, <laughs> you know, that's your responsibility to be tougher, you know, and that's just it, you know, and, um, and I, I, um, I enjoyed that as well. I think it, it, it gave me a lot of the lessons, a lot of the best things that give you a long career, I think, and give you a strength to do other things, to be able to handle other situations later on. I think I learned a lot at that time, but um, but very very different, like you say, different football and a lot of long balls, fighting, and you know, getting kicked, and you know, and I had to adapt to that because it was like, okay, I'm small, you know, and I was told I was small, and you're not gonna make it, and you're you're you know, you're too little, and you're gonna get kicked about, and you know, and they're gonna be too big for you, too too strong, and it was always, oh, I have to find the solution to that. I have to find the answers to that. I have to find the way to still play in this game with any other kind of restrictions that, that other people see. I didn't see it because it was like, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. <laughs> I've got other ideas because, um, you know, I played up front and I enjoyed scoring goals. Mm -hmm. So the, the, always the answer was, well, you're going to kick me three or four times. I'm going to get up five or six times, <laughs> you know, and then I'm going to score two or three goals, you know? So it was always, that's the answer. And, and okay. Yeah. You might get, you might be big and you win a couple of headers. That's great. But you have to stop me from scoring the goal. And the goal is what everybody's doing on the pitch. You know, we everybody's out to win the game. You score more goals. That, that's always the answer. And uh, I, I kind of was, you know, educated enough to be able to, to understand that. But also, you, you also have to get up, you have to be strong enough to get up, to get into the, back into those positions that, 
you know, you, you can make the difference. And it was, that was my mentality. It was always making the difference to score goals, you know, to play my positions and as a striker as well, to score goals, to put the ball in the net. That's always the answer because you can't do anything about that. And it affects the game. And it, it, you, you left me for one moment and you kicked me 55 times. But the one moment was the, the difference in the game. And that's always my mentality. Just what was it like, though, when you did get your chance at, at that first team football? Um, I believe it was against Wrexham um, more than 22 years ago when you, when you made your debut. 23 years ago now. Yeah. Yeah. A, a, long, yeah, a long time ago. I was 16. Um, and this is the year where I was like, you know, this is, I'm a 16-year-old kid. And I, I had to score so many goals in that year <laughs> just to get to a position where I was involved in the first team. And this is back where there was only three subs and, you know, a squad of 20, 21 players. Uh, so there was a few, you know, older experienced players left out for a 16-year-old kid. So, but to get into that position, you had to prove yourself. So I had to score a lot of goals. I remember I scored something like 14, 15 goals in like, you know, 10 games or something uh, just to get involved. And, um, you know, making my debut was amazing because... You know, only a few months before, I was, you know, sitting with all the youth team up in the top, watching the first team, thinking, oh, we all want to be there. We all want to be down there playing in front of this crowd. And, and when I got there, it was an oh, incredible feeling. It, amazing. It was such a, such a buzz, such a uh, fulfillment. It was, uh, it was the best. It's the best feeling. And I can imagine, you know, every fan wants to be out there. Every fan um, you know, thinks of if I was out there, the joy that it gives, it's exactly that. It's exact that feeling that you have. It's, it's amazing. And it's, it's the best. It's the best feeling. And you're playing in front of the crowd on the pitch and you're playing football. That's the best. It really is the best. And scoring your first goal as well, I'm, I'm guessing that that's an even better feeling. Yeah, yeah. A couple of months later, I scored um, in the, I think, the old FAW Cup. Um, that you know Cardiff used to play at, and uh, I was on the bench. I came on and um, managed to get a chance in the last uh, ten minutes or so. Uh, scored a goal, and that was my first ever where I introduced myself to to the Cardiff fans and uh, did the somersault and uh, celebrated. And uh, that's where it, you know making your debut is a great thing, but then scoring your first goal is incredible. An incredible feeling. It's such it, you just lose yourself for a few minutes, you know, and um, and that was a, that was an amazing, amazing feeling. You know, such a fulfillment as well. Uh, but really, I think it, it it gives you confidence as well. It gives you confidence for all your work that you do, and you're in that position, and you you're in that position. You 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 enjoy it, and you try and enjoy it as much as possible. I did as well. Were you addicted to that that feeling? Because obviously, when I know the first few seasons were a bit tough at coming through at Cardiff, but when you did get that chance, you certainly uh, you certainly took it. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely addicted to it because uh, as soon as I I used to watch players on TV and they scored goals, and you know I enjoyed football, but then when they scored the goal, the the uh, the joy that they I could feel it, you know, and it was the same and. So when I, I was like, you know, when I, if I ever become a footballer, I, I want to feel that, you know? And so I went out and scoring a goal and, and playing in front of the crowd. And then you are, obviously you get to score goals and you, you're in that position. Yeah. It's, it's a real joy. Um, and it's something that's, it, it was very, very special. It's very, very special to, to be working for something, trying to be a footballer, trying to make it, trying to get out there. You get given the chance you put on the shirt and it's, um, it's something that um, it, it makes you look back and feel all the times that you're watching down as a, as a kid, as a fan, and you're watching on TV and the joy. It, it's an accumulation of all those things into, into one moment. So it's, um, it's something special. And, and when you were coming through at Cardiff, you won that promotion, obviously, the Millennium Stadium. Just how did that feel? as well as, you know, as a Welshman, to, to come through and win an occasion like that, you know, the national stadium. Yeah, it was, it was, it was special because, it, 
you know, at that time, I think Wembley was, um, was closed at the time. They were rebuilding it. And uh, the best thing was it, it, all the games came down to Cardiff. So, we, you know, we, we had the, the, the final, the playoff final there. And um, I remember we had a great year. And that was, that was actually probably, the, I think it was the, one of my, well, the most consistent year. I think I, I, I managed to score 35 goals for Cardiff. But... An accumulation of I was there a few years. I wanted to break some records. I wanted to do well for Cardiff. I wanted to, you know, leave a, uh, a legacy, leave leave um, uh, memories for for the people, but also for myself. And um, that season, I went on to to break all the records um, at Cardiff. I scored thirty five goals, and and then we end up going into the that playoff game, and going into that playoff game in Cardiff, and it was special because it was in Cardiff. Um, uh, I, we played against QPR, who were you know great at the time, and it was it was just a feeling of we have to do this because we're home, we're we're here, and the fans are right behind us, and the celebration that's going to happen um, just because of that is is going to be amazing. So um, it wasn't the, the greatest game, but it was all about winning, getting through, winning the game, and being. Um, you know, getting getting uh, getting the win. I think that was that was the best thing, and uh, we did that. We uh, we got through, and it was incredible. I think it's the it is the best way. It's the most nerve wracking, but the best way to win games is in the playoffs and in the playoffs uh, final, uh, because the crowd is so big. It's an occasion, and it's it's win or or go home, <laughs> and it was that occasion, and it was it was amazing, but. Um, but we had we actually had better games <laughs> during that year, but we didn't care because we we enjoyed it. We celebrated the fans. You know, I still remember it to this day. It's one of the first things that get gets talked about all the time by the fans, and uh, it was amazing. You talked about that obviously the pressure of playing at in Cardiff, um, representing um, Cardiff City as well. But is there an extra sense of pressure as well playing for Cardiff because? It's not like every you know football club in England where they, they, there is sort of maybe those local rivalries and you know there's, there's teams close by. For example, London clubs don't have to go very far to to face their nearest rivals. But in Cardiff, all the players are you know in and around the city. You know, every, there's there's an expectation um, being a Cardiff player that you're representing the city and you're representing Wales as well. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and and um, I mean, you, you have Swansea. You have Swansea close by, and that, obviously the Swansea Car- Cardiff rivalry is, is ruthless. <laughs> is ruthless. I mean, so there's some stories there <laughs> that we can go into, and uh, but at the time, you know, Swansea were you know really uh, lower down, and we were kind of the team going up. And um, but you are representing, and it's the capital of Wales, and you're representing you know, a, a country really um, at the same time, because it's so unique at that, you know, especially when you start to do well and more people start to follow you. And it was, it was uh, at the time, all eyes were on us, you know, and, and especially in Cardiff as well, because it's kind of like, a, it, it's kind of like a real focus on Cardiff. What's happening? How is it, who's the players? Who's the top players? What's going on? And it's it's a big focus on on Cardiff. And it was the same. And um, you know, especially at that time, because we had uh, you know Sam Hamam in charge. You know, we had uh, we were a team that were progressing and going up the leagues. And uh, we had some top players come in as well. And we we kind of assembled this great team together going up. And uh, so there was a real energy about the the team and the club, and when when we around those times it was it was it was great. But there was a lot of focus. There's a lot of eyes on us. There's a lot of like things going on, and there's a lot of uh, it created a big fan base, but a real joy as well because I think uh, a lot of people um, even to this day say about how much that period of time was the most enjoyable ever that they've ever been, you know, uh, as a fan. And um, that's, that, that was, that's amazing to hear because it's what we wanted to do. That's, what's, that's what you want to leave uh, when you move on and 
not play anymore or whatever and go on to do other things, go play for different clubs. You want to leave that. And um, it's nice that people, that's what they remember as well. And you touched on it there in terms of, you know, the Swansea-Cardiff rivalry. But how would you rank that in terms of your career as well? Obviously, it's one of the most fiercest rivals in, in, in football, but you've also got, you know, the Nottingham Forest-Derby County uh, rivalry as well, which, you know, you, you've played. And where would that rank? Would that be the, high, the, the top one, the Cardiff-Swansea one? I think it's the most aggressive. <laughs> this, is, this is the best way to, to say it. I mean, there was a period of time where I remember, and I'm a young player, maybe 17, 18, maybe, and I'm in the squad. And, and uh, I remember, like, Swansea fans were banned to come into Cardiff at all. <laughs> you know, like zero. Like, you're not even allowed because it's going to end up with crazy fights and, like, rioting and all of these things. And then it was the same. Cardiff fans were banned to go into Swansea as well. So there was a period of time where they, they were banned. And I remember, you know, you're faced with just the home fans, you know. And um, it's, it, it's, it's right up there. It's right up there because it's aggressive. It's ruthless. And it's uh, fierce. You know, there's a lot of rivalry and and almost hate it's it's that very thin line um but you know i think playing forest derby is a is it's an intense rivalry but i think there's still a connection between the clubs it's not like a separation there's a connection because it's so close because um you know the histories between the two clubs but it's nice to play in as well you know it's it's very very um tense but nice to play in but I, th- I think Cardiff Swansea is right up there because it's it was it, it, just because of the intensity. It's very very different intensity, and it's um, at times dangerous. You know, very very dangerous, and it 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 overflows the the atmosphere overflows onto the pitch a lot and a lot more. I think in uh, in in sometimes negative way. And so. you, you sort of touched on it as as well in your previous answer, but. Um in terms of breaking records for Cardiff. But probably the most interesting fact, which I've, I can't believe I've not talked about already, um, is the fact <laughs> that you've scored you know, hat-tricks in all the EFL divisions, the Premier League, and at international level. Is that the the thing that fans come up to you and talk to you um, most about now, after your career's finished? Yeah, worldwide. <laughs> and don't forget the Cups, the FA Cup, the League Cup. <laughs> they... They, or they, they, they remind me, and apparently comes up everywhere and, and worldwide as well. I, 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 you know, I've spent the last couple of years coaching in America, and um, I'm playing abroad as well. And in in every country, I think I've been reminded of of it. And um, but it's nice though, you know. I, I um, I'm thankful for it because, you know, it's it's not something that um, is common every day. And and you know, it's not just one goal or two goals. Yeah, I was I was. Um, you know, my art is, is in scoring goals. So when you can be, uh, leave something that's unique in what you do, what your art is, I think it's, that's even more special. And I think a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people really, really uh, remind me of that. And it's great. You know, I, I enjoy it. And uh, they ask me the question as well, you know, because apparently it always comes up in every quiz question, pub question, uh, <laughs> you know, online, it always comes up. But it's, it's nice though, because it's... Um, I think it's something that's unique. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's, uh, it might be done again, you know, especially with how maybe football is now as well. So, I mean, we'll see. Is that we'll something see. you're most proud of, though, the, the records that you do have in your career? You mentioned those records for Cardiff. That, that record, the unbelievable hat-trick record, is, is that what you look back on um, fondest? I think... I think one of I think um, in 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 the top I think uh, when you break records when you you know um, when you go play for different teams and can achieve something at that at that team that's unique you know you break a record you 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 score a certain amount of goals especially in my case you know um, you can become a player that's remembered in 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 that that team that club uh, I think that's great and I I enjoyed that and. Yeah, that's one of the things. I, th- I think also the other thing is, I think because, listen, I'm a romantic of the game. I, I enjoyed, like I said earlier, I, enjoy, I enjoyed watching football. I enjoyed watching different football. I enjoyed players. I enjoyed watching players. So when I then become a footballer and 
then be able to, you know, be on the pitch and, you know, play in the Premier League and play in the, in the Football League and, and play in different countries. Um, and one of the things I remember as well is, yes, you break and run. I think one of the biggest things is also being on the same pitch as world-class players and the best that people have seen, you know? For instance, like, you know, when, you know, you're on the pitch with Steven Gerrard, you're on the pitch with Ronaldo, <laughs> you know, you're, you're watching Ryan Giggs as a kid and Ryan Giggs is, is next to you, you know, and you're, you're on the pitch and then, you know, you, you go and play for your national team and Ryan Giggs is there, you know, and, you know, people like Gary Speed and people like this, but, uh, you know, you play against, I don't know, JJ or Kocha, you know, Henri, Burkamp, the Invincibles and, I think those things are what I, I also fondly me, uh, remember because you, that's what you want to play against the best and you want to be on the same pitch as some of the best players and be able to come away with stories, with l things that you've learned or see the level, the, the actual level close, close by that you're like, that's why they're this at this level that's why they're unbelievable so those things i i remember and i um i i love just as much because i you know i'm a romantic of the game so i um you know I, those those were those were special because it's also an achievement in in it's you can score goals as, and you know score goals against this team score against this team but some of the best things some of the best things is is the feeling like you come you come off playing against the very best you come off playing against this player and he's unbelievable and you play you know sometimes you win lose or whatever you can you can take it you whether you win or lose but sometimes you it's very unique when you can play some uh, sometimes against the very very best and the feeling that you get from that is very fond memories fa lots of fond memories and um in different countries too played in different countries so it's i've got to to enjoy that uh, a lot you know a lot of players that i looked up to watched admired or just thought we're incredible, <laughs> you know, incredible players. And you, you come off thinking, what a good game, what a great player that, that was, you know. We'll get back to you um, in first spell at Cardiff shortly, but based on what you've just said, I just want to know who, out of those great players you've mentioned there, who was the best you came up against? The best. <laughs> um, it's fine. I had to I had to pick uh, an eleven the other day, and it was very 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 tough. <laughs> I had to pick an eleven that I played against or played with, and there's a lot of people that missed out. That uh, unbelievable. Um, but uh, I always I mean I always think back. There's there's a couple. Um, you know, playing against uh, playing against Cristiano Ronaldo the, at Man U. And the last couple of years, especially, was was incredible. And obviously, he's gone on to become this. You know, he's taken it even further again. But obviously, he's unbelievable. But I wouldn't say he's the best. I, the probably the best and I, the best player. I always say that I played against was Ronaldinho, and um, played played against Brazil, and he's he's playing, and um, and Ronaldinho, the Barcelona Ronaldinho, and you know. He was just unplayable. He was a magician. It, it's, it, there's nothing he could not do with the football. Like if you wanted the football to float for five minutes in the air, he could do that. It's that he's on that kind of magician level. And uh, he's the best player that I've ever played against, I think. Um, it's, I mean, there's a lot of great players too. There's so many great players. You know, people like, uh, you know, Buffon, you know, Great player, goalkeeper, um, Del Piero um, for Italy, Cannavaro, Nesta, um, you know, Crespo, Van Nistelrooy, <laughs> um, too many. Henri is up there too. Henri, Thierry Henri and, and Dennis Bergkamp, those two uh, are up, to, up near the top. Kaka, I mean, there's, there's lots. Uh, like I said earlier, there's, there's a lot of players that missed out on, on this 11 that I was trying to pick um, this past week. But... Uh, out of everybody, I'll say Ronaldinho. He's just a magician. Just incredible. Incredible. International football gives you those opportunities, doesn't it, to, to play against the best. But um, like I said, we'll, we'll come back to your time at Cardiff now. And after that playoff final 
win, you get that promotion to, you know, um, what would be the championship now. Um, what was it like to to be at that level for you then? Obviously, attracting more interest in in that league as you were before, and continuing to be successful. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it, it's. I was still proving myself. I was still young. Still you know, trying to be as, you know, the, as good as I could be. Um, we had a good team. We were progressing. We were going up the leagues. And it was, um, I think it was, it was just about, you know, doing well because we were on the way to try and make it to the Premier League uh, with that team. Um, so it was also sometimes it's, you know, teams are going up to the championship or whatever and then, and then, that's really as far as they're gonna they're gonna get to because you know the players are gonna get sold and things. I mean, in the end, that's what happened. Really, you know, we we got to a point where you know I was sold and a few other players were sold. So we kind of all that team kind of started to split up later on, but not for the case of not trying for two or three years where we tried to we tried to go up to the Premier League. We tried to do well, um, but it, we had a really really good team, some really great professionals, good players. Um, and a lot of that team actually went to play for different teams in, in, the, in the Premier League later on, uh, actually. Um, so we had some very, very good players. Um, and um, I remember, you know, we had coaches, uh, Lenny Lawrence, who's, you know, one of the few who've coached over a thousand games in, 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 in the game. Um, Alan Cork as well, good good managers, good people that were kind of around. You know, Sam Amman was in charge with his crazy stories and his craziness around the club. So lots of lots of different things were happening. But but uh, it was a good moment. It was a good it was a good time. But we were also trying to all um, make our own way in the game. And you know, whether it was as players, coaches, and you know, the club getting promoted. We were always, we were always trying to to do the best that we could, um, and we did that. We got a we got a few promotions because, you know, back then we, we were also in in the old Division Three, and we we got up promotions, promotions, got into the championships. Uh, we got close, but never went up then in, into the Premier League. Uh, unfortunately, I think if we stayed for a couple of years, I think we would have we would have got that. Uh, we would have got there because we were a hungry team that you know where. It would have been a matter of time, but you know, different circumstances ended up that you know we we didn't end up staying together. I think that was the the biggest thing. But I think if we stayed together, I think we had a good enough team to to do some things. And you, but you did get that chance. Sorry to play in the Premier League. You you got the opportunity with, with West Brom. Just tell us how that that move came about and and what it was like to to be you know a top flight footballer for you. Yeah, it was. I was very split because at the time, like I said, Cardiff at, at the time, um, I came through when I was, you know, they gave me the chance to, to come through and play. I think I was there seven, seven years, six and a half years uh, altogether um, from, from, you know, 16. And I got to a point where I was like, I want to play in the Premier League, but ideally with Cardiff. Um, but the club had accepted an offer from West Brom and I had to make a decision and they were like, well, you know, listen, we've accepted the offer. So, you know, you, we would like you to go um, and we, we want to sell you. So it was a tough decision because it was, okay, go to the Premier League and play in the Premier League or, or stay at Cardiff. Um, unknown, don't know what's happening. The club, you know, clearly want to sell me because they've accepted the offer um, so it was, it, I was very torn, um, but in the end, you know, was, I wanted to play in the Premier League, and that was the biggest thing. Uh, I was like, yeah, how many times do you get the chance to play in the Premier League? So um, I went because of that. I wanted to play in the Premier League. I wanted to play against the best. I wanted to go and um, play against the top players and the best teams, and that's what I wanted to do. So and I decided to go to West Brom, and I, I remember at the time I almost went to. Everton, I think there was talks of Everton as well at the time. And um, it, I think something fell through last minute or they did, didn't make a decision. And it, I remember it was the deadline day and it didn't quite happen. So I went to West Brom um, and 
and it, everything was just brand new, different, um, you know, and it was just a, I think they were still finding their way as a club, I think, at that season when I went. And, um, but it was still good. It was still good because of good experiences because, uh, you know, I, I made my debut then at Anfield, um, you know, for, against Liverpool, you know, and, um, you know, played, you know, I came on and it was my first game and I'm like, yeah, you know, you come, you, you, it's your first game in the Premier League and, you know, one of the most iconic moments is, you know, you coming down the tunnel and this is Anfield, you know, it's, it's those situations that you, you dropped in within like a week, you know, uh, you know, one week I was nowhere near this and the week later I'm, you know, looking at this is Anfield <laughs> and, you know, Steven Gerrard and uh, Xavi Alonso and, and Torres and, you know, all these players are playing. So uh, it's like, uh, it, it, it felt good at the time because at the same time you're like, wow, this is, this is the top. Like, this is the top. This, this, is, this is where it's at and this is where you want to be. So it was nice. I mean, I think we lost the game, but... Um, it was nice to make my debut at a, such iconic stadium and such a, a play against, you know, incredible. I remember that game. Xavi Alonso, I think, um, came on for Steven Gerrard, <laughs> you know. So Steven Gerrard run the show. is unbelievable. Um, he was, you know, unplayable. And then he comes off half an hour to go. And then Xavi Alonso uh, replaces him. And you're like, there's just no letter in class, you know. And Xavi Alonso's is passing balls 50 yards when the ball is, is this much off the ground, you know, and he's cutting the grass with the, with the ball, you know, from 50 yards with a side foot pass and straight through to Torres and he's going through and you're like, this is high, high level, but it, amazing too, you know, because, you know, when you're dropped into that, um, you can appreciate it. I, I definitely appreciated it, but also felt the level as well. It was, it was nice, but felt it. <laughs> Yeah, I think the club felt it as well, didn't they, West Brom, when they were in the Premier League in those years? You know, it was effectively like a, the yo-yo club, the original yo-yo club, wasn't it, back then? Um, how was it for you playing in, in a team where, in comparison to Cardiff, where we can go into every game where you, you know, you've got a chance of winning and you know, you're relatively successful, to going into a team where most weeks you, you're really struggling and you know, finding, it, finding it hard to pick up points? Yeah, it's, it's, it's an adjustment because the mentality is different. It's an adjustment because you, uh, the environment is different and the types of players are different. And um, also things like um, things you don't uh, or people don't consider, like how you fit in with the different players and, ha and how much you don't know about the player next to you and what his habits are and what he's going to do and does he see you or not? And do you have a, an understanding or not? And that takes time. And because of those things, you, it takes an adjustment. And I think that's why also the club were up and down for a couple of years as well, because, you know, there's so many players come in and out, you know, over that period of time as well. So at Cardiff, I think, I think we were probably set up as Cardiff to go up and, do better than West Brom going to West Brom and, and, and we were up to do better, I think. You know, because I think we would have made a much bigger impact if we went up with Cardiff at that time. And um, because also the, the players that we had was, was, you know, they understood each other. They played together. They, there was, a, there was a, a level of understanding that uh, brought out the best in each player. And I... I you know, at times it was good and we won some games at West Brom, but it, it, it was a struggle also because sometimes it was, it was rough because, you know, we didn't always have a way of playing and uh, an understanding and people connecting together. Um, and it only came out sometimes, you know. Um, we got on, not, not didn't get on, stuff like that. We, we had some good players and, and good people there. And, you know, and, um, I remember Kanu came in at the time and helped us a lot. Uh, played with Kanu there. Kevin Campbell was there at the time. You know, people who played at the top level, good experience and, and good people, you know, good people. So the, it was nice. Um, and we had good people uh, that, that were in the squad. We just, we needed more. I think we needed it more as a team and more as, a, as an idea of what we needed to do to, or the solutions to play well. 
um, because we could have won more games if we had better solutions and better ideas. And um, so that, that was, that, that was tough, but you know, also at the same time, you know, <laughs> it maybe might've made a difference, maybe it might not, but we also were playing against some of the very, very best the Premier League has ever seen. You know, we're playing against the Invincibles. We're playing against Alex Ferguson and Manu and Ronaldo's this Ronaldo coming up and, you know, uh, trying to make a, a name for, you know, we got Scholes and Keane and Van Nistelrooy and, you know, all of these players and gigs and, you know, it's like Rio Ferdinand. We got all these top players, you know, playing at that level. Even even the likes of Bolton had like, you know, Ivan Campo came from Real Madrid and like JJ Okocha, you know, came from um, from Europe, but it was he was unplayable. You know, he's one of the best players in the world. So it's like, we, we were playing against high, high level players. So it was difficult anyway, but you know, you want to have the best chance possible. So it was tough. It, it was tough, but enjoyable in a, in a football sense. Did you, know? you think you got the chance though as well? Um, because obviously there was a lot of strikers at West Brom during that time. You didn't really um, get a consistent run of starting games, did you? You used more as, as an impact player. Were, were you happy with that? Uh, no, <laughs> no, because it was, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I remember during that year, I was like, uh, listen, I, I, let me play, I'll score goals. It's, it's not like, I, I can't put it in more simply than that, really, you know, it, like, are we, are we trying to score goals here? Are we trying to win the game or are we trying to draw or what, what are we, what are we doing? Like, you know, what's, what's, what's happening? You know, I'm a striker, I score goals um, and I scored the most goals in that year. And that, that, was, that, was, that was it because that was the frustration because it's like, okay, I, I need some more games. You need to rhythm. You need, um, you know, to understand the player that's next to you, play together a little bit, um, you know. And, you know, in the end, we, we did the best that we could. And I, I remember, I think in that year, I think the goals to, goals, goals to games ratio was, I think I was second to Henri um, in the amount of minutes, goals, yeah, I think, in, in that season. So it was like, you know, that's the reason, you know, it's, it's not about just, you know, you go to a team and defend and, you know, and stand there and, and let them win, you know, and, or, or you hope you're going to get something out. It's like, you have to do something in the game. You've got people here that, uh, that um, can impact the game. Um, but, you know, at the same time, you still have to do the best that you can with what you have. So that's what I did really. So, what, I think it was just the case of, you know, if I get two minutes, if I get 90 minutes, if I get 10 games, I can only go with the chances that I have and play the best that I can in that time, you know, and, um, and that's what you have to do. So that's, that's, that's what really w was happening. And um, you, you, it, was a, it was a team that it wasn't flowing and other things were factoring in, you know, losing and, and whatever is it, it, uh, making an impact to who the team is next week or, or who's playing here or whether we're super defensive or not or, you know, things like this. So it, it's, it just happens. I mean, it's, it's, it's football. I think you sort of proved that as well in, in terms of, like you mentioned, there, your goal scoring exploits. You actually came off the bench to score the hat-trick, didn't you, against Charlton? Um, what, yeah. what, are your what are your memories of, of, of that day? It's quite a crazy sort of game for you. Oh, it was a crazy game. I, I remember actually that was the day that um, I, I, um, I actually, I wanted to, I wanted to leave West Brom. Uh, I was there about a year and a half around that time. And it was my second year. And uh, I remember just um, because I found out just before kickoff that, uh, you know, the team's named and everything. And, you know, obviously I'm on the bench. I'm not starting. And I was like, I've, I've been playing well the last few weeks and um, I was just so disappointed that I was like, um, okay, like maybe, maybe somewhere else and somebody who, you know, who wants to play me all the time and can allow me to score goals. Maybe that's where it lies. So I remember before the game, I was, you know, and you're professional. It's not like you're not professional. You're, you're, you know, clearly because I went on to score a hat-trick on that day, you know, so you're very focused but you're on one end is the feelings that come into it and you're a human being and you're like, you know, I remember I was like, 
I think I probably have to move here and I, you know, maybe I have to look somewhere else. Um, you know, and I remember walking on the pitch before that game thinking that, and, um, obviously half an hour later I had to switch and go straight into it and be, and play the best that I could. And that's what I, I tried to do. So went into the change room, you get changed. Now you're ready. It's game time. Let's go. And, and that's, that, that's just what you do, or that's what I did. Uh, so I, you know, I was on the bench, uh, came on the last 20 minutes and, uh, and scored a hat trick in, I think it was 17 minutes or something like that. Um, but the memories were, were great because we needed it. We were desperate and it was a game we had to win. The Charlton were in and around us. We needed, that was one of the games that we needed to win. We needed, we needed points because we, it was the last kind of like 10, 10 games or something or whatever in, in the Premier League. And we were going down. I think we were still bottom at the time. And we needed points. And what, that's one of the games we had to win. So going into that game, I think it's 1-1. I come on and then I go on to score one and then two and three. And it ends up, I think, 4-1. Um, the game and I, I came on and scored a hat trick and, and I was like wow that's and it was great it was a great feeling because I everything was about we won the game the team did well and you know I came on to make a, 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 an impact and score a hat trick but it was um, it was okay we need to at least another two or three wins ideally to get out of this position because that was the year of the great escape and that's the run that well, one of the games that started the run to go on and win a few games, get points, and then we go on to to stay up the um, in the Premier League. So um, it was it was great. It was great. I actually didn't know. I, I didn't know I um, I broke any records until I think it might have been Chris Kamara actually after the game. I think he was yeah, interviewing me uh, for 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 Sky, I believe, and um, and uh, he says to me. Uh, so I think uh, you're the only player to score a hat trick in, in you know, and he went on to name everything: Premier League, League, League Cups, International. And I was like, really? I didn't know. <laughs> so I, I didn't know until that that moment. But um, but then that's how I kind of found out, and that's how I was like, I got taken back a little bit because I was like, oh wow, that's I didn't I didn't know that because you're so busy doing the day to day, the training, the goals, and and where that drops in the records, then you kind of figure out sometimes through other people. But it was good. It was good. It was, it was great memories because I also wanted to score a hat-trick in the Premier League. I wanted to score goals in the Premier League. And to achieve that, that's an uh, in, amazing, incredible feeling as well. And uh, at the time, a team that were in the Premier League for a number of years, Charlton as well, and uh, you know, a, a, a well um, kind of oiled Premier League team. And um, and we we managed to get uh, goals against them. We managed to get the win and uh, help our team as well. What did you say to to Brian Robson though after the game? After you scored that hat trick, you know you're begging to to start games. You, you're thinking about leaving. What what did you say to the manager? Oh, I, was, I, I mean, I was, we celebrated afterwards because we got the win and. It, it, you know, you you leave it at that. You enjoy the moment for the team, and you know, in, we enjoyed it. We we celebrated in the changing room. So I didn't say anything, nothing there and then because it was about performing and I was supposed to come on and perform from the bench on that day. And, um, and we were supposed to come out with, to try and win the game. So I, it, that was, that was it. So I was very professional in that, in that way. And, um, and left it at that. Um, it's actually not till the week after one week later. And I think we were playing Everton at home and I scored a hat trick on the, the week before. And I was supposed to, um, well, I assumed that okay, that's my that's my uh, performance. That surely this week I'll play. <laughs> you know, um, you, you can't get a bigger impact than uh, scoring a hat trick and helping your team win four one and is the biggest win of the season. You know, um, so uh, and uh, I see the lineup again, and uh, it's I'm not in it, and I'm like. Wow, because everybody, the whole room, all the all the all the players straight away just looked at me for my reaction because I was I just kind of like stayed very quiet. I looked at it, I was disappointed, stayed quiet, and then um, 
and then I remember having a word with him afterwards and um, I just said to him, I said, because he said, oh, you know, I, you know, whatever reasons, I can't, I can't remember that day, whatever reasons that he, he kind of said that I wasn't playing. And I simply said, I think we all know, I think Nigel Pearson was actually, it was me, Nigel Pearson, and Brian Robson, actually, um, three of us. And um, he, said, he said whatever he said. So um, I just looked at them both. I said, um, I think we all know in this room that I should be playing. And they didn't say anything back. They, they couldn't disagree. And we left them at that and went on um, to, to play uh, against West Brom. Uh, sorry, uh, playing against uh, at Everton on, on that day. And, um, and that kind of left it at, uh, at that, you know. But, you know, you have to kind of say as well. I think when it's so obvious, I think when they feel it too, you know, when, when they know. And that, that's, I only would have said that knowing that they know that already, you know, but, um, but it's fine. It's, it's all in, inside the professional level and, you know, it's some of the things that you kind of go through and, and uh, you have these chats during that time. But, but I had to say it too, because come on, <laughs> you just got a hat trick the week before, you know, I think you you've got somebody, yeah, you've got somebody who's, who's dying to play for you and dying to do well and and they've just did it so let them loose you know do you, you know, the point is to win not to you know to draw or, or these other ideas you know we need to win so but you know that's that's what happened yeah is was that like the moment when you, you knew you were gonna move on at the end of that season and join Norwich yeah 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 I, I mean it, it was it was just the uh, I think the the full stop, I think, I think, um, because it was like, okay, l- listen, to this. you know, I enjoy playing football. I want to play here. And, and if it's not here, it's no problem. There's other teams that we can, we can move somewhere else and play. Okay. So uh, I remember Norwich came in and, and made an offer and, um, they accepted it. Um, and, um, I think I think Southampton as well at the time uh, made an offer as well. I think um, I had to kind of make a, a bit of a choice. I think there was somebody else as well kind of came in late, but uh, they expect, accepted the offer at, uh, from from Norwich, and um, I ended up going to Norwich. I think it was in January. So I actually ended up. I think we were playing. It's funny enough. It was later on. But we were, I think we were going back to Charlton to play them. And we we're going back to Charlton and they accepted the offer on the bus. And by the time we reached the hotel, then Brian Robson pulls me and says, uh, we've accepted an offer uh, and um, we would like to, to, you know, decide kind of thing. So I said, okay, well, I'll, I'll see. Uh, let me think, uh, whatever. And then, you know, obviously I quickly made up my mind. Um, and uh, I was like, yeah, okay. So I had to go to, to Reading where Norwich were playing. Uh, Reading, I think. So I actually signed then for Norwich uh, at Reading. <laughs> so, and then traveled and then traveled back with, uh, with the bus then um, back, to, back to Norwich, I think. So it was, um, it was an interesting, but, you know, Norwich were a good team, good, good setup. I liked how they played. Um, um, they were uh, they were an exciting team as well. They had good players, and I wanted to join them. I wanted to to score goals there and play well. And if I got another move, I got another move. But but I was looking forward to play for for Norwich. But um, went to Norwich. Norwich was a good time. Norwich was a, actually one of the best times of my career actually in in Norwich, and one of the actually most just goal scoring wise and and. And very consistent. I felt very good. I felt that, um, you know, especially after West Brom and 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 the different situations there. I think um, Norwich was kind of uh, let loose a little bit, you know. Um, and I played all the time, scored goals, and and it was enjoyable. I really, really enjoyed it at Norwich. I think uh, I was there a year and a half, and um, you know, I managed to get a few records there as well, which was 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 nice, but. Uh, had a good time, you know, play some good players, you know, Darren Huckabee was there. Um, good, good player. You know, we had a, we had a good team. Dixon, a two who was there, Jason Shackle and, 
Um, Robert Green was in goals for us. Um, uh, Leon McKenzie was was there. We, we had a good team. We had we had good players, a good setup. Um, I think it was just kind of Norwich were trying to figure out as well where they were, were they trying to go up, were they not, where you know, were they tr- trying to push. But I think I was kind of brought in to try and be a part of of a of a different direction, uh, a good direction. So it's, but it was good. It was I think good. at the, I think at the time Norwich as well were replacing Dean Ashton with you. Um, yeah, who was that's right. Yeah. Who, he went on to be to play for West Ham, didn't he? And he was like their star man at the time. Was that one of the attractions as well for you, that you would be one of the star men in their team? You were, weren't guaranteed a place, but you were, you know, you thought of more highly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was about, um, you know, it was about going somewhere to, to try and do well, but they, a manager who um, made it clear that, listen, come, we want you to play, we want you to do well, uh, we want you to do what you do best. Um, and, um, and that's, that's exactly what happened. And that's what was great. Um, I, Nigel Worthington was actually the manager. He signed me and, um, and it was great, you know, and, um, you know, even people that behind the scenes, like, you know, Dealey Smith and, uh, people like that behind the scenes, very welcoming, very, uh, very, um, very nice, very, very good people that, um, helped me settle in the club, you know, good people around and, and, um, we had a good time. We had, we had a good time. I think, I think our, our results, I think could have been better at times, but we were definitely entertaining. We were definitely, you know, we always scored goals. Um, we had good players who created chances all the time. And um, we, had, we had a good team, you know, we had, we had a good team, especially when I look back at the team that we had as well, you know, we had a, an exciting team and we always, you know, we were capable of beating anybody on our day. I think that was the that's how we kind of were in the league in that, that those years. You mentioned Delia there. Did she ever cook for the team? No, unfortunately, <laughs> we wanted her to. Uh, but she was great. She she um, I remember I got injured because I I think the just before I left, I think I left in the, in the summer. But I, I did really well up until the Christmas where I I got a a, a big injury. Um, I tore my um, adductor off the bone in training and I was I was feeling so good everything was great I think I got like 17 goals by Christmas something like that and this just freak accident happened in training I I got um I went to I was doing shooting I went to shoot and as I pulled my leg back just the force I ripped my uh adductor uh my groin off the bone um and I got a big injury and um and it was just obviously devastating because, you know, it was such a great season, doing so well. And then obviously this injury. But then um, a couple of weeks later, you know, I had an operation, things like this. I, you know, I was, I was at home or whatever. And Delia was actually wonderful because um, she's one of the first people that uh, sent me a present. She sent me uh, one, of her, one of her books. Um, she wrote it out to me and and said, you know, get well soon. We're thinking about you. And um, that was, I thought that was very nice, you know. And I kind of just felt that's uh, that's the type of club, that's the type of people that we're around. And that was great, you know, because you need that type of people. That goes a long way because that goes beyond football. That's not, um, you know, I, I I appreciate that all the time. And and it was so nice uh, from her and um, and the people that they were still thinking about me. And you know, even though the season was going on and. You know, obviously, when you're injured, it's one of the worst things as a footballer. You know, it's um, you're you're kind of stuck, and you're 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 rehabbing and getting to work on this injury, and you can't be out on the pitch. But that, I just thought it was a it was a nice touch, it was a nice um, uh, just gesture and thought. Um, so that was really really nice. But unfortunately, she didn't cook for us. <laughs> I would have liked her to, but it's. Um, now we had some good people there, good, good, uh, good club, good, good chefs to, that, at the training ground. Now you mentioned it actually, so she was fine. Obviously, we had good chefs with her yeah. in charge, so <laughs> it was, yeah. no, it was good. It was good. We had, we had a good time there. One of the perks of the job. But you, you then got that move to um, Derby, back to the the, the Premier League, um, signed for by uh, Billy Davis, I think, at mm-hmm. the time. Um, what what was that like to, to to be back in the Premier League, but also Again, at a club which, you know, obviously, well, 
the, the Premier League's biggest ever strugglers, weren't they? That, that Derby County team that season. I'm guessing it wasn't the, the most enjoyable experience for you. Yeah, I mean, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't at all. Um, and yeah, listen, we, we, um, I ended up um, going to Derby because they went up to the Premier League. They, they obviously, they made an offer. I had, a, I had a buyout clause at Norwich and uh, they triggered it and obviously Norwich accepted and, um, and uh, I went to Derby because I wanted to play in the Premier League again and that was, it was that simple. I wanted to play at the top. I, uh, I, got a, yeah, I played you know, a couple of years of it uh, at West Brom and uh, I wanted to be back there and that was the place to be and um, went to Derby to, to, um, to play against the best and, um, you know, and, and that's what it was about. I didn't really want to leave Norwich actually. Um, I enjoyed it there and also did well there. So I really enjoyed it. And I thought over a couple of years times, I think they would have kind of built, uh, or we wanted to build a team that can challenge and go back to the Premier League. Obviously, you know, as years go up, they managed to do that. But I thought I didn't really want to leave Norwich. And um, it was very, that was a tough one. That was a tough decision because, um, you know, it's again. It was the pull to to go and play in the Premier League, and it's not always guaranteed when you can play in the Premier League or when you're going to have that chance. And uh, I went, and uh, and yeah, it was it was it was tough because I think soon enough after you know really a couple of months, I figured that there was a lot of things that were going on that um, it 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 made it. Uh, it made it difficult, and you could see the path that the season was going to go, and uh, that was that was disappointment, you know, because it it just um, even though even though we you know obviously we tried our best, and you know we played against uh, you know we had, that was the season where I think Mourinho came in and uh, destroyed everybody, and obviously Man U were still strong, and loads of teams Arsenal was still strong, um, but. But Mourinho came in, and uh, Chelsea just went to a different level. So, um, you know, and uh, sorry, no, it was, it was before that. But but Mourinho was already there, and they made it like they were just the team to beat. You know, the, they were just going on to a, such a different level that they were they were the Chelsea were the team to beat with Mourinho and it, obviously his impact. Um, but it was you know while us it was like. We didn't. The the team, the club, were still figuring out what position, how you know how that was going to play out. You know, I, I think uh, you know clearly the 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 club wasn't ready that year, and everything wasn't set up right to to be to be there at that time. You know, I, and I think that was one, the biggest thing because that's the biggest thing why we didn't get enough points. And obviously, you went on to join. The arch rivals after that again um, with Nottingham Forest. Just tell us how that move came about because obviously it's quite interesting in terms of you know a player going from Derby County to, to Nottingham Forest, isn't it? Yeah, um, it it was. I think you. I mean, it, it was an easy decision in a way because Nottingham Forest is one of the biggest clubs in the whole of UK, you know, and uh, and in the world as well because they have a big history and the history commands that as well. And, the, and also not just the history, the way the club is, the following, the, the crowds that they have, the, the, the people that, um, you know, bring the club together. All of that comes into effect. And, um, and when at the time they were actually in the league below, uh, I think league, uh, what is it, league one maybe would be now. I think at the time they just got promoted to the championship and um, already Derby rele relegated. So we we're always going to be in the same league anyway. And, um, and I remember they coming in, um, Colin Calderwood actually was, uh, was the manager. And um, I, I, I knew of his interest and I knew he liked me and he was, um, he was looking at me. Uh, I knew from, you know, a few months before didn't think too much about it because I was like, okay, it's like, you know, that's maybe one thing, but I knew a couple of other people that were interested because, you know, at the same time, I knew I was, I was going to leave at the end of the season anyway. And it was just a case of where, 
uh, and Forest, uh, I think maybe Sheffield United as well. There was a couple of others that were interested, but uh, but Forest um, put in the right bid, and uh, and also ju I just felt Forest was the right club and the right place to play football uh, at the time, and um, I just thought that's that's the move. That's the that's where I feel that I need to go. That's where I need to play. And I also, you know, I remember watching. Forest in the Premier League with all the top players that they've had and the history that they've had playing in the Premier League in the 90s and obviously the history before that with, with Clough and, um, and the historical background of, of the club anyway. Uh, and it's always a, always a good club. And when I went there, you know, we, I remember we spoke for hours and hours with Colin Coldwood and we're talking about tactics and whatever, everything before I even signed. And I just, I just thought that was a nice, that was nice because it, it kind of gave me an idea of, okay, I think this is the right place at the right time. And um, they, they clearly really, really want me to come. And that's why I went as well. You know, I just felt it was the right move. And I was looking forward to it. I went there. Um, you know, they paid a, a few million. Yeah, so it's, it, Forest was great because Forest was, um, Forest was uh, the right place at the right time. And uh, it, again, it was it was a little bit uh, it was a little bit similar to Norwich in a way, in where I went there to to try and do well, try and play well, and um, it was great. You know, I think slowly, slowly we started to build the season up, and um, and then obviously over a three year period, we went from again promoted championship, and, you know, to building a, a good good team that we're challenging now to go to the Premier League. So that was, uh, it was a great few years. And uh, one of the most fond memories is when I was at Forest because also there was, uh, there was some success and success comes in different ways of you, you're achieving to try and go to the Premier League, obviously from, from the championship. Um, and we were also doing well as well. We were winning consistently. You know, defenders were playing well, midfielders, strikers were, everybody was playing well within the team and it was a good setup, good team. And um, we had, I had a good time at Forest, and um, it's, I think it's it's always special now that the warm welcome that I have now, I think it gives you an idea of the time that we had there, and the time that I had there is it was very very special. I really enjoyed it. Is Forest? Would you say apart from Cardiff, obviously, but after Cardiff, said the um, club which you hold, you know, most affection towards now. Uh, I would say yeah. I would I would say definitely we, one of. We, we mean, seem to have a lot of interest in terms of like the fans um, who've asked questions. A lot of them have come from Forest, so that would suggest that you, you obviously were held in high regard by them as well. Oh yeah, they're, they're um, amazing, <laughs> amazing. The um, Forest fans and the worldwide, huh? and this is one of the things that, especially when I start to go abroad and play abroad. That's one of the things that I really got to find out how much of a following Forest. I mean, I was at, I have messages now from Brazil, um, from you know there was Forest fans coming to watch games when I was in you know uh, Phoenix, you know I'm in Vancouver, I'm in Toronto. There's Forest fans come and watch games. There's Cardiff fans even go over there, but but uh, Forest, especially the the impact around the world and there's still the following that they have is um, they're special fans because they remember everything. They have, they have a deep, deep-rooted following for their team and the players, and especially when you make an impact as well. When you make an impact as well and you're remembered and, and they hold you in, in a certain regard, um, they're always amazing. I'm very thankful that they, they do because, you know, they're, they're always, always great, always great to me. Um, and it's never been a point where it's, it's not been. So I, um, I, I, I really appreciate that. And... It's it's always the same, you know, and the, the people from whether they're coming from Australia or, you know, uh, Holland or Brazil or wherever the, the Forest fans are, it's um, it's very unique. It's very unique. It's uh, it's special that they have such a big following. And as well as that, you, you got the chance later on, obviously, after Colin uh, left the club, um, you got the chance to play for Billy Davis again. Um, yeah, I've heard quite a few stories about Billy Davis in terms of his approach being quite unique. Is is there any example of which you, you can tell us about that sort of unique style of management that he had? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Billy's very unique for sure. Um, listen, at, I think we we 
we didn't we didn't get on eye to eye. I think at Derby, but uh, more football wise, not just in a personal way. I was fine, no no problem. And the same with 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 Forrest. Uh, I was a little bit wary of like, okay, uh, is he gonna play me? Is he gonna not? Because Colin Coldwell left, uh, Billy Davis came in. Uh, but we quickly sat down after you know the first day or so uh, that he was in, and um, we got a good understanding. And and it was it was definitely diff- things were different. Things were definitely definitely different to how they were before at Derby. And then um, they, he really wanted to push, and um, and Billy was just um, I guess he's got a very aggressive style. <laughs> I think it's the best way. Um, and I learned a lot from him, by the way, especially now I'm coaching as well. I learned a lot uh, different things, especially when I look back now as well. Um, you, ten- you tend to remember, but uh, he was very, very super intense, I think is the best way to describe Billy. But, um, it, and he definitely brought out the best in, best in, in, in you and, and way more, probably 15, 25% more work rate and, and effort and um, aggression in you that you didn't think you, you maybe had. And he had, that, he had the, you know, the, I guess, the impact to do that. And, um, you know, I just remember if you give the ball away on the pitch a, a lot as well, you know. And, you know, if I'm, I'm a striker, I'm, you know, I'm trying things. You try a pass or, you know, you, something happens, you get tackled or whatever. Straight away, it's like, <laughs> on the sideline. And it's Billy. And he had the loudest shout. <laughs> and he used to whistle. He had the loudest whistle where you could hear him and you, know, you knew it was him. And he, you could just hear him. And straight away, I was like, okay, no problem. I hold my hand up. And, okay, I gave the ball away. It's my bad. I'm good. <laughs> okay. And then you carry on the game. So, uh, got a lot of that as well. But I think overall, we were, we were successful and, and, uh, and we did well because, you know, he, he definitely pushed us to the absolute limit. I think that's the, that's the biggest way. And, um, you know, I think he got, uh, he got, he definitely got the best, best out of us and uh, make us work very, very hard. And that's how, his, that's how his style was. Very aggressive, very, a lot of work ethic, a lot of, a lot of things going on. But, um, um, but you know, it was, it, was, it was funny as well. It was funny. I mean, I, get on, I got on fine with him and, uh, and also the coaches there. So I d- definitely enjoyed it there as well. I heard an interesting story from um, Gary Taylor Fletcher um, from his time at Blackpool when you faced them in the playoffs in 2010, and he, he was saying that, that Billy was very he was very confident going into the game, and he was very confident in a game that you played against Blackpool earlier in the season where Blackpool beat you, but he rested quite a lot of the first team players. And he, he um, said that Billy came up to Blackpool and said, after the game, said to the players that um, he did it on purpose because he wanted to play them in the playoffs. And then, obviously, he went on to lose in that playoff encounter against Blackpool. And, he's, and that was, according to Gary, that was their motivation. Was he like that? Was he quite confident in, it, in his players at the time? Because he, he seemed to be, a, from that, hearing that story, it sounded to be a very strange approach going into a game like that. Yeah, I mean, can, can you recall? That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Billy was very. Um, you never quite knew what he was going to do. I think is the best way. So uh, you never quite knew what his decisions were going to be, why and what. And he he definitely went round and round and and definitely thought a lot about different things, different angles from from different things. So he definitely thought, uh, you know, went into those, especially those decisions and. And did a lot of those things, and we were obviously, you know, sometimes we were like, okay, I, I, I don't know if I'm playing, I, I'm playing, or, you know, and there's definitely a lot of that, um, not in, the, not in a bad way, because I, you know, we, we enjoyed playing there, but um, yeah, we did go there earlier in the in the year, and you know, half of us were were playing, and you know, but he, he never always told us, so sometimes it's very like, I don't know the reason, I don't know what's happening, so. He kind of made the, made the decisions, you know, as you do as a as a manager and as a coach. So he, um, yeah. So when we played them in the, in the, in the playoffs, it was. I mean, we were confident because we we felt we felt good. Blackpool, where that's the season they went up actually, and um, kind of just took the playoffs by storm and and ended up, you know, beating everybody and going to the Premier League. Everybody's like, how did that happen? 
And really, that was the year we were supposed to go up because I think we were, we were probably the best team, most consistent team in that year. And that's probably why Billy felt confident because we were, we were at that level and, and we did well. And the playoffs was just, I think, um, I think we were just rocked by the different different formation that they played. Uh, I think they were very, I think they played uh, like a 4-3-3, very, very attacking. At times they were four or five people attacking. Charlie Adam was playing for Blackpool at the time. You know, just, you know, great, great, good player, but great passes. Um, and, um, and yeah, they did well because they, they went on to really have a different style. And, and I think they have, they had a, an, a, a, a uh, a positional but like a very attacking style that we didn't figure out on the day and we didn't figure out over the two games because we we didn't know you know how to handle and and um, we made a lot of mistakes as well in in those in those games even though I mean it was a thrilling game where you know we got we scored goals they scored goals and it just felt that they they ended up you know running away with it and um you know, it, it's, it's disappointing. That was the most, one of the most disappointed I've ever been in my career because I just felt like crying because it, I just felt that was our year. I felt that that was our time, and we were. This is this. That was the time where we were we were going to go up and we were going to go to the playoff final and win it there. I, I really felt that, and to lose that and and get knocked out, that was really really disappointing. And especially because it was a surprise for everybody that Blackpool were in even even in that position at the time for, for Nottingham Forest as well to, to be in the Premier League would have been something special wouldn't it for you and, and to, to guide the club back to the Premier League would have been something special for you personally wouldn't it to play for a club of that size in the top division yeah yeah I think we were set up I think it was the right time I think the you know we were still building but the club was in a good position an exciting period um, and we had a good young a kind of mix of young and experience as well and uh, we had good players you know that were i think would have handled the premier league and gone into the premier league and um and um and you know won some games as well uh and i think um yeah it, especially with the club and the, the historical background of the club but also the club at the time because it was a new energetic really uh good footballing team that we had and we had players capable of making steps forward. And obviously, you know, within that team, players did make steps forward. And it was, it was a good team that um, it, was, uh, it was disappointing, but we, we felt that it was uh, a time that we could have gone up and the club was, um, was going in, in the Premier League direction. And we were firmly trying to think about the, we were thinking about the playoffs even before the season started, we were thinking about the playoffs midway through the season, and we were focused on trying to make an impact on on the championship to try and uh, put ourselves in a position to go up. And so it was disappointing when when you just miss out, and um, you know things could have gone a completely different direction if they, you know, one goal, two goals here and there, you know, it changes the course of the club and the direction of of the the team at that time in those years. And I'm going to introduce some fans' questions now because it seems to be an, an appropriate point with one of the questions that has come through. Sharma says, you know, what was the rationale um, behind leaving the city ground when you weren't you know, the club's star man at the time? Obviously, I'm guessing that Cardiff City's a big pull for you. Um, to be honest, I, I actually uh, I wanted to stay. Um, I didn't know whether I was going to or not. I was actually, um, my contract was coming to an end and um, I wanted to see my options, but also at the same time, uh, not because I wanted to leave. I, I was, um, I wanted, uh, I wanted, we were negotiating the contract really. And, um, and it, it didn't, it didn't come to a point where we, we were both satisfied. I think that's probably the best way to kind of put it. Um, and even down to in the summer, I remember, you know, I, um, I think Steve McLaren came in and, um, and he, he came in over, over that summer when I left. Um, and we actually sat down, I sat down with him and he was trying to convince me to stay and, and everything. And I said, well, listen, I'm open to staying there. It's, it's something, you know, I want to be here. I've been here for three years. 
and uh, something that I I want to be here. But um, obviously, everything else has got to be right. You know, <laughs> at this at this stage of my career, everything else has got to be right too. You know, I I want to ooh, I want the club to make that uh, situation uh, better as well. You know, and and um, yeah, so we carried on kind of discussing things and contracts and everything like that. But I think we we were we, nothing. It wasn't right. Uh, I think it, it, we didn't come close enough uh, at the time because also at the time I, I got an offer from Cardiff and you know I, it, at the at the same time and I was like you know it'd be great to go back to to Cardiff and play there and um, and it, it just um, you know. It, I was again. I was torn because I I didn't really want to leave Forest because I enjoyed it there so much and I, th- I thought it was great and we had a, especially two really successful years out of three. So uh, I think Cardiff as well. At the same time, I I, I wanted to come back. Um, it's I actually at the time it was Forest Cardiff uh, and also I think I almost went to China at the time um, and it was it was. I had some discussions about that as well and I didn't feel it was right to to go to China at the time and I felt Cardiff was the right place to go and um, that's why I came back and I I also felt that um, uh, I wanted to have a play again at Cardiff. Uh, They just had the new stadium at the time and um, things had changed a little bit at that time but um, I just felt that it was the the right place for, for me to go. And uh, I was out of contract and, you know, I got a couple of offers and, and one of them was Cardiff. So um, I just felt that um, I was coming back home. I was coming back home to play. And um, that was a big, big draw for me. And you say it was a big draw, but how how disappointing was it that you, you didn't make that step of getting, you know, Premier League football? Obviously, the club went on to do it after you'd left. Yeah. And do you know what? It, it's... It, the building process sometimes takes a couple of years, takes a few years and takes, you know, different times and, and you know, things happen. So um, it just, it didn't happen when, you know, I came back to Cardiff, we played, we, we did well. We actually, we, you know, we did quite well and we got to the League Cup final, um, we, uh, 2012, I think. And um, so we had something of success and the club was doing well at that time as well and, and looking to go to the Premier League. But it took a little bit of time to get to there, but um, it was just a different time, I think, at Cardiff as well, a different different situation because it was the you know the club was a little bit different and trying to do different things as well behind the scenes. So um, that it ended up that um, I wasn't there just long enough to join in with that you know the club going to the Premier League and everything like that. So it just happened later on, actually a few months. Uh, that I was gone a little bit later on. That's when they went to to actually go to the Premier League. Then, but um, before that, we had a we had a good time. We you know we we're pretty consistent. Um, we got to the league like, league cup final, played against Liverpool, uh, where we lost on penalties um, in 2012, I think. Um, so we had some good experience as well, good times during that those those couple of years. But um, I just I, I came to a point where I was like I was also trying to play more regularly and keep staying with the Wales team as well and you know you uh, you do you do what you can and um, at the time was you know I wanted a different challenge as well because I also wanted to experience different football different styles and play abroad as well so that's when I went to Maccabi Tel Aviv in Israel and um, and and went there because um, I, um, I I just out of the blue really I got an offer to to go there and play there and, um, you know, at the time I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to play consistently. Uh, I experienced different, something else. And um, I think it would be a good step for me. I was, it was only on loan for, for a few months, but I knew I was going to come back to Cardiff. But I knew also at the same time, at the end of that year, I was, go- I was going to leave anyway. It just depends whether I played and went somewhere and played, went on loan, played a little bit more, um, got some good experience abroad. And then... Um, decide where I was going to leave, you know. So uh, I was going to leave too. So it uh, it just happened out of the out of the blue, and then I went to uh, to Maccabi Tel Aviv, and um, which was an interesting, different different situation again. 
Yeah, I want to get on onto that shortly. But your time at Cardiff, um, I mean, you touched on the League Cup final. You didn't play in that game, did you? But what was that as an occasion like to represent Cardiff City and in a match of that magnitude in a major final? It must have been, you know, a, a proud moment for the club. Yeah, definitely proud because it was, you know, to get to a, a cup final and any of the, the cup finals, it's amazing. Uh, and especially, you know, I got to feel it, you know, we play at Wembley, we play against Liverpool, you know, Suarez, Gerrard at the time were unstoppable. And, um, you know, to play against that in a cup final was, uh, it, it's special because, you know, that's, you want your team to play against that. And that's what, you know, we're in that case. The occasion was, was great. You know, because you know, once you kind of come out of the tunnel and you see, you know, over 80,000 there and it's full and the atmosphere, it's, it was special, really, really special. And it's so nice. It's, it, it was like, you know, when you're low, low down and you're looking up and out to this sea of people, you know, and um, I think it was, uh, it was a great occasion. It was a great occasion. And, the, you know, and we did well, you know, got penalties where... We, everybody thought, ah, okay, this Liverpool team is going to win 5-0. It's little Cardiff or whatever, and they're going to win 5-0, and it's going to be easy. And uh, it didn't end up that way. So we, uh, we we pushed them as much as possible, got to penalties. They won on penalties. Uh, but, okay, it's it was also Liverpool, a, a good Liverpool team that, you know, you, you just felt they, uh, they had too much. And uh, you sometimes you have to hold your hands up, and they had great players and a good team and one of the top teams. And, they went on to win it, um, but the achievement also was, it was great that we got to play in the final as well and, and got to the final. I think, um, you know, it's always tough against Liverpool, you know, <laughs> it's Liverpool. So, How disappointed were you, though, to not, you know, play a part and to not take a penalty as well? Would you believe you would have had the confidence to score in that situation? Yeah, yeah, I think you'd, you always have the confidence to score. Um, I think you always have nerves anyway, <laughs> I think especially in the penalty shootout in the cup final. But um, it's funny, I, every now and again when something great happened, um, I, I always have this feeling before a game of like you, it's, something really good is going to happen. So I woke up that morning and, um, you know, the name the team, but I was on the bench. But I just felt that um, almost like if I was going to get a chance, I was going to score. I was going to score maybe one or two or, or maybe more something really good that I was going to, I was going to, and some, I always got that feeling. I got that feeling on that day. So I was, I was even more disappointed that, that uh, I didn't get to, uh, to, to play because, um, you know, I think there's a lot of other things were also happening at this, at around that time of the final. So, um, you know, so it was, um, you know, I felt that if I was if I was gonna be out there, I think I, I would have uh, I, I would have done something because it I just always had that feeling and it, that feeling always like was uh, was always something happens, always something good happened when I had that feeling and I woke up and I just felt good in that final and okay, it didn't happen and didn't didn't play, but you know sometimes these things happen that way and sometimes they're really out of your hands completely. And, um, you know, other decisions are made for other reasons rather than football. So, um, but, you know, it's, it was still a great occasion to be at, a great occasion to, to, to be surrounded in, you know, and, and, um, and also that Liverpool team, Suarez was unstoppable. Uh, Gerard was incredible. You know, Carragher was playing and, you know, they had a, such a good team as well. And, um, it would have been tough anyway. It would have been tough against that team, but uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, it, I think after that, then it was it was really just about just seeing you know what and how you know the rest of the season was going to play out, you know, and how it's going to end up that that year. And just another fan question um, before we don't forget about them is um, out oh, yeah. of all the out of all the clubs you played at. Um, who was your favourite strike partner to play with and why? Favourite strike partner? Wow. Uh, I've got a few. I can't really name one because it's uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's bad to not name some of the others because yeah, they're sitting they, on the they, fence. <laughs> we, we just uh, we we just had a, a lot of fun. 
Um, I'll name a few. I'll name a few. Um, strike partners. Um, Peter Thorne, um, who I played with at Cardiff. I think we, were, we, we just understood. He helped me a lot, taught me a lot as well. Um, so me and Peter Thorne at Cardiff, a lot of people still remember him because he, uh, just that, again, that period of time going to the playoffs and that successful time at Cardiff, he was playing up front with him, uh, up front with me. And uh, we just we just clicked so, and we scored a lot of goals. The year that I scored 35 goals was really a lot of help down to him because a lot of creating for, for me, a lot of teaching me at that period of time. I'm a young player, he's an older player, so I had a really great time with him. Uh, some of the others, you know, I went to West Brom, uh, played with Kevin Campbell, who's great, uh, really enjoyable to work with. Kanu, I played with as well. He was great. Um, Dion Dublin, I played with at uh, Norwich. Um, I forgot to mention him earlier, but Dion Dublin was great. Um, so easy, so nice, so enjoyable to play with. Such a uh, clever player. Uh, he was great. Um, you know, I played with good players up front. You know, when I played with you know p- people like Craig Bellamy uh, with the Wales team, uh, John Hartson was good. Um, even gigs, you know, a few times when we played like in the front three. Um, if you, if you, I guess partners. You not so much partners, but almost a, a, a three front three. So that was enjoyable. You know, people like that. Um, so those, those were enjoyable. You know, I even got to play with, uh, Andy Cole for a brief spell when he, uh, the year that he retired, he came to Forest and he retired at Forest and, um, got to play a brief spell with him. Uh, that was nice because I got to learn quite a few things and, um, but yeah, you know, I, I got to play with some, some really good players. It's tough to say partner because I also played a lot of the time. People don't forget that you know I only played with partners. A lot of the time, played in the front three. Say at Norwich, for instance, I played up front on my own, and to one side was um, was almost two wingers, but but really two wide players that kind of came in. So we almost played with three. Darren Huckabee kind of come in a lot of the time as a front man or just off. So you know, good players that I played with. So uh, with Wales as well, I, I got to play really almost like a front three. You know. Um, as well as partnership. So it, it's not so much partnership as like a front two. So yeah, got to play with really good attacking players. That, that's the best way to, to describe it. But I enjoyed, I enjoyed playing with, you know, people like Giggs, played with uh, Bellamy, um, you know, like I said, Dion Dublin, and, you know, people like this. Kanu was great, you know. Um, but good, good, lots of good players that I played with that were enjoyable to play with. Yeah, cause some some big names there. But um, coming back to as you mentioned earlier, playing abroad, um, how does an opportunity like joining a club like Maccabi Tel Aviv come around for a player who's playing in the Championship at the time? Um, so uh, I, I mean, um, so how it came around is actually Jordi Cruyff um, was the director of football there, um, and I guess Jordi knew of me from uh, from seeing me play. And um, I guess from other sources as well. And uh, he knew of me. And um, he's the one actually wanted to sign me. So he's the one that um, he wanted a goal scorer. He wanted somebody to come in and and, um, and he wanted a striker there. And um, he's the one that called me actually. So Yordi, um, Yordi was the one that really convinced me. So it's his fault. <laughs> and uh, he pretty much said like, listen, I want you to come and, you know, I want to build something new, something fresh. Uh, I've just come in director of footballs, but I want to build something that's, uh, we want to be successful and I want you to be part of it. So I was, at first I was like, mm, I've never been a, played abroad, but you know, I'm, you know, Maccabi Tel Aviv, you know, what, what do I know of it and everything. So really he, he called me back then a couple of hours later and I was like, he was like, listen, um, we want you to come, but I will look after you. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Um, he's like, come, come and play. If anything's wrong, anything happened, I'll, you know, I'll be the one who, um, who will look after you. And, um, you know, it's, if you don't like it, no problem. We can, we we'll speak about it. It's not a problem. Don't worry about it. Just come and play and, and score goals and do well. So Yordi's the one that really convinced me because after that I was like, 
do you know what? I think it's the right time for a challenge because I was open to a challenge, a different challenge. I just wasn't aware it's that challenge. And um, Yordi, you, when Yordi took me over there and uh, he looked after me well, Yordi was great, but um, it, was, it was just completely different, different mentality, different way. The fans were fanatical, um, like just, you know, a completely different type of football. Um, so it was, it was interesting. It was very interesting. And at the time, you know, Jordi is the director of football, but um, the Barcelona youth team coach came. He was the head coach. And we had a lot of uh, fitness coaches from Valencia. So we had a lot of uh, Spanish influence. So um, because of that, it was like very like, okay, Israeli, Hebrew, uh, Spanish. And, uh, but it was, it was a good fact. And we, had, we also had a few foreigners you know, from Spain, France, Germany, a Nigerian goalkeeper. So different people that were kind of in the teams. So, and then obviously me, but it was interesting because it was such a, a blend of different people kind of come together. And um, even, the, even the team talks and everything, every day was interesting because obviously I didn't speak Spanish and I didn't speak Hebrew. So every team talk and the, and the coach uh, only spoke Spanish because he didn't speak English, didn't speak Hebrew. So he, he'd have a translator. So you speak in Spanish. So I always, that's why I started up picking like Spanish up as like trying to understand Spanish a lot um, and uh, trying to pick up words, trying to understand Spanish a lot. And um, so he spoke in Spanish. Then uh, the translator will speak in Hebrew to, you know, to, to the rest of the players. And obviously the ones who could speak Spanish understood, first of all, the ones who speak Hebrew understood from the translator. And then there was me. So I you always got somebody who was translated from Spanish to Hebrew, then to English to me. So every day was Spanish, Hebrew uh, to English. So it was, it was very interesting, but Long team you talks. learn a lot too. What's that? Long team talks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. It was, it was good though, because it, it made me just open up a lot more, a lot open up to different cultures, different ways, different, and also even languages, you know, and um, that's when I started to pick up like, okay, Spanish, this word means this, or he means this. And so you start to, to see things from, from other people's ways and ideas and try to figure them out. And, uh, but it was good. It was good because it, it also taught me a lot about a lot of things it taught me a lot about their football, but it also taught me a lot, a lot about like even the Spanish football because the Spanish influence from there, the ideas that was from a lot of Barcelona ideas, a lot of uh, ideas from Jordi, a lot of uh, Oscar Garcia was the coach, a lot of ideas that he had, and a lot of ideas that they've kind of been influenced to. But then at the same time, the local ones, the the different types of mentalities that were 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 there, but um, also just to just to to be able to be dropped into that. And now you have to learn other things outside of football. You know, a lot of things. I actually, I learned a lot because there's a lot of ideas also that I was like, it taught me a lot about British football too, or some of the things in British football, because there's times there, especially in the first six weeks, I was like, why didn't I learn this earlier? You know, some of the ideas where I was like, that makes so much sense, you know? I, I, that's so much ahead. That's so far forward. That idea is so great, you know, and loads of things like that where I was constantly learning all the time. And, um, I really enjoyed that because it really opened my mind up to really different styles, different ways of thinking about football as well. So I really, really enjoyed that because I think that's the best thing that I really got out of that experience. You know, obviously yeah, as well, later on, we, uh, there's the, war between Gaza and uh, the Gaza Strip and, and Israel that's ongoing forever. So we got caught in the middle of that. And so the war within that came with um, one day where we're training and the, um, uh, they fire missiles from Gaza into Tel Aviv, which is about an hour, just over an hour away. But it was the first time they did that in like 20 years or something. So and it happens to be the time when I'm there. <laughs> so, 
you know, I'm like, this is not, this is not the, this is not the time. I mean, the place is great. Israel's great. I, I enjoyed it, and the club is, it, it's, it's a big club. Very, it's the biggest club there, and so that was a, a lot come with it. But then, obviously, with the war, the politics, everything that came with that outside of the game, it was interesting. The first time that happened, so rockets fire into into Tel Aviv, and um, they have this automatic kind of interceptors in Israel where they fire rockets back to, you know, intercept their rockets, you know, and blow them up. <laughs> so, but what happens is you, you, as soon as they're fired, they, they, I guess the sirens go off and you get an understanding of when the siren goes off, the locals know because they go to um, you know military service for a couple of years, so they understand this from from a young age. Obviously, us getting dropped in with training, and this happened when we were training. So we, the siren goes off, and you're supposed to go to the side of the building. You go to the side of the building, and then obviously take shelter. The interceptor goes, and, you know, siren's gone off. Interceptor goes, blows the the their rocket up, so it doesn't have any effect on. On, on the Israel side. So they, they they shoot it down before it gets to, to Israel. But obviously these ones were coming close and getting fired in, in, in places where, you know, first time they kind of got near Tel Aviv and got into Tel Aviv as well. So it was, uh, it was an interesting time from that sense because everything was fine for a, a couple of months. And then all of a sudden this happened. And then all of a sudden, then it was sirens every day, you know, and you're like now caught up in a political uh, position of, you know, war because, you know, sirens go off. We literally, you know, missiles getting shot into your city that you're in, um, even though it's like you're trying to play football. So it's, it was it was an interesting time. But. It taught me a lot. It taught me a lot. And, you know, I, I always tell the story about the, one of the times where, you know, it was daytime and everything was clear. One of the rockets gets really right above our training ground um, and you could see it. And the, the interceptor rocket blew it up, like literally above in the sky and you could kind of see it. And all the shrapnel drops down five minutes from our training ground. And, um, and you're like, that's, this is, yeah, this is a, this is a lot. Um, and I think so people was, could blame me for moving on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, funny enough. So we actually stayed, so we had a meeting after the Jordi call, called all of us in and said, listen, this is, this is uh, obviously out of just general football. And, and this is out of, uh, out of our hands a little bit because, you know, I can only say that if you want to leave um, uh, now, it's it's not a problem because you know I've got no problem with it. It's, it's, I'm not going to hold you to contracts. This, this that doesn't matter right now. This is about people. It's about taking care of you, safety, everything. So if you want to go, it, it's totally on you. Let us know and and have a think about it if you need to have a think about it. But but you know you're open to to go. So you had a meeting with all of us. So some of us, you know, a couple left. Some of us stayed to say, okay, let's see how long it goes for, because apparently it was, it was going to stop completely. Um, so we were waiting, waiting. Eventually, after a few weeks, it stopped. But, you know, in the, in the end, we, we, we stayed. And um, I don't know why either. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why. But, um, but I think we were still playing games and still apart from the sirens the the crazy thing was every day was was normal day to day beautiful place the the people are good the the beaches are nice the place the city is nice it's it's nice but then when the siren goes goes off it's obviously different but then everything gets gets back to normal a couple of hours later and everybody is going about their business so that's why also when everything just within a couple of hours, it just gets back to normal. And you're like, is something else gonna happen? It was like, how do you deal with this? But people just get on with it and they go around, you know, they go to shop, they go to a restaurant, whatever, you know, and, and they get on with it. So we spent a couple of weeks because I mean, we were close to, to, to leaving. And, um, and uh, one of my, one of my, I was close with one of my friends. He's actually the FC 20 coach now. Um, Gonzalo Garcia 
Uh, he's gone into coaching now, but he was there at the same time and we were, we were close and we were always like, it was me and him just kind of like, I think, you know, the next couple of days, I, I think if this carries on, we're going to leave. So we, we were that close, um, but it ended up slowing down, stopping. And I think we spent another maybe six weeks or something like that. And um, got, we got to January because my loan was still January and got to January and then um, eventually, eventually left. But, you know, I always say at the same time, all that going on and listen, you, you kind of taken away by this is not just football. This is, this is politics. This is this, this is so many other different things that go into it. But um, at the same time from the football, I always, I always say that that was a lot. Uh, I, I learned a lot and uh, mentality as well, as well, it really changed a lot there. Uh, and, I, um, in a good way, in a good way, put me in a good direction um, and just adjusted a few things that uh, I was like, this, I'm going to take this on. Yeah, I'm going to take this on. I'm going to keep some of these ideas with me because I, I really enjoy these and I think they're very, very good. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's not, uh, you know, I thought I went to play football, you know, not to go to war. <laughs> so. <laughs> Quite an experience for you. Um, then you eventually move on to, to North America after that, um, hoping for a bit of peace um, from that, I'm guessing. But what was the culture like in comparison at the clubs you played for um, over there? Um, no, it was good. It was actually, um, the coach was Ryan Nelson, um, who played uh, centre-back for Blackburn. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so um, good guy. Really, really, really good guy. So he was the coach and he's, he's the one that took me over there. And um, it was um, it was interesting because it was obviously and at the time, especially being in Maccabi and being in uh, in you know playing in Europe now, uh, it really I think I guess it was a it added to me wanting to stay abroad, wanting to play more different places. And one of the places that I always thought of was was uh, I wanted to play out in North America. Um, and Toronto came in and um, I was like, uh, <laughs> it was crazy. I actually moved to Toronto um, within, a, decided within like four hours, maybe <laughs> two, three hours, something like that. Um, it was like one moment I didn't even know anything of Toronto. I get a phone call and the next minute is like, oh yeah, we'd like you to come to Toronto. And then I was like, well, so move to the other side of the world. Yeah, yeah, move to the other side of the world. Okay, I think I need to think about that for a minute. <laughs> this was on a Sunday afternoon, I remember. Um, and uh, I was like, call me back in a couple of hours. <laughs> so a few hours call, uh, come by, call me back. It's like, have you made your mind up? It's like, you know, this is not an easy decision just to just decide oh, you're going to go to Toronto and live the other side of the world. And then I said, you're going to have to give me another couple of hours. So later on, he called me like, he said, listen, we have to make a decision because they, you know, they wanted to know. Um, but then I was, at, by that time, I was, I, I was like, do you know what? I think North America would be, it's a good time, good, r right time to go. Ryan Nelson was really wanting me there. Um, and then Toronto is a good city as well. Um, you know, after researching those few hours, <laughs> uh, but I also knew because, um, one of my friends played in Toronto. So you, um, I spoke with him about it as well. So I didn't go it blindly, but, um, Toronto was great because as soon as I went over there, I went to, uh, so this was Sunday. I get the phone calls Tuesday. I was on the plane to go to, uh, to Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so tuesday uh sunday afternoon i got the call tuesday i was on the plane i uh, went tuesday night i was in toronto um and um the next day i went to meet the coach you know properly i played against him but i never got to speak with him. i spoke with him um we talked about whatever they showed me around the training ground training grounds unbelievable like you know premier league standard and i Coming into the club, I was like, wow, this is this is very impressive. This is very impressive. And that's one of the decisions I was like, yeah, this is the right decision. Because uh, it was impressive straight away. And the people were great. You know, really take care of you, look after you in this angle, that angle, thinking about this, doing that. Everything was really looked after. So I was like, yeah, this is really run excellently. 
Um, and um, I just felt it was right then. Uh, so I went there and um, signed straight away. I went there really just to to go and enjoy football, but also to have a ex different experience because I, I knew, you know, looking at the team that we had there, we had, you know, French players, we had Dutch players, you know, so everybody always thinks, oh, you go into North America, so it must be American players or Canadian players. Well, no, half your team is from everywhere else. Um, yeah, there's a half that is, you know, local as Canadian or American, but yeah, then there's the other half is from everywhere, including me. So you have people from everywhere. And, you know, I also wanted to, really in you know enjoy that but also learn a lot you know learn a lot of different different and players who play the top level as well in europe you know going over there so it's, it's not like uh, you just have anybody also playing there you know you have good good people so i went there to really just learn a lot uh, i think learn a lot of different cultures learn a lot about different people and um and i got a taste of it when i was in maccabi but i wanted to um i wanted to enjoy football you know, I wanted to enjoy football and I didn't know how long I was going to go there for. At that time, it was for a year at the time. And I thought, I'm going to go, enjoy it, try to do the best I can. And they put pressure on you that you have to do well. <laughs> it's not like you go in there and it's like everything's fine. No, you, 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 you come in from Europe, so you're supposed to be good. <laughs> so show us. You need to show us. So it was still the same, same pressure, but it was different, different because you have to you have to adapt a lot. There's a lot of differences, really a lot of differences that happen off the pitch, rules, different things that happen and different ways of doing it that are different to, to, to Europe. Um, and even things like travel, like one of the biggest things, travel. You know, every away game is three days because you travel, you fly everywhere because, you know, you're two, three, four hours flights everywhere because you can't drive because it's going to take you a day and a half to, to drive, <laughs> you know, it's that far away. It's that big of a country and or countries because it's Canada and the U S I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed some good, good people, good players who played with, but also good people that we're playing against as well. And good stadiums, good, good places that, um, and just different, different factors that we're, we're part of the same game that I've always known, but different things that you have to think about. So it was interesting. It's definitely interesting. But uh, Toronto is a good place and enjoyed it. And I, it's it's still my favorite favorite city in North America to to uh, to live in, and uh, I enjoyed it very much. Did you just tell us as well now what what's happening in your career now? For those who aren't aware, um, in terms of uh, the, the footballing side obviously you retired from playing football but very much still involved yeah so you know I, I went to Toronto and I, I was thinking about coaching because that's where I was uh, I started to do my uh, my UEFA licenses actually here with uh, in the UK um, and um, I was thinking about coaching but I, I was still you know a player firmly a player so I went to, to Toronto then from there short spell in Chicago then Vancouver and then Vancouver I got uh, played there for a year and then got offered uh, to be a coach um, coach with the first team a little bit but also uh, coach with the youth team so I kind of did both um, and um, and that's what I thought I had to kind of stop playing and I thought, you know, I, I want to become a coach. That's what I want to go to. I've got an opportunity here. I've got an opportunity to get experience. And that's what I started doing. And then that's what I've really done since. And that's where, what's, what's what brings me to this day now. And uh, I've, I've spent the last uh, four years out there coaching in Canada with Vancouver in MLS and um, with youth and senior players. And then I was assistant coach in California the last couple of years. and. Um, and that's what I've been doing ever since. So now I'm I'm firmly a coach, and people still to this day ask me, "Oh, you still playing? Or get the boots back on?" I'm like, hey, "Listen, I've been retired four years. You know that. Huh? People still think I I played yesterday. <laughs> so yeah, but I've been coaching. Uh, I've been coaching ever since, and uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Definitely different. A lot harder. A lot harder work." But uh, but but definitely enjoying it, and I'm just about to do uh, well. Now coronavirus has paused everything, but 
I was just going on to my pro license now. So that's what I've been getting up to. Um, I left uh, the US and Canada um, a few months ago. And um, I was supposed to start the pro license uh, in the last few weeks. So we'll wait to see when that's going to start back up. But that's what, uh, that's what I'm up to these days. And that's what my focus is on. And that's where the direction that I'm going. And if you could be a manager now of any of your former teams, which one would you choose? I'm guessing it's between uh, Forest and, uh, and Cardiff. <laughs> no, do you know what? It, it's, not, it's not exactly that, uh, that simple because I enjoy different challenges. And sometimes where, where you have been as a player is not always necessarily or directly, you, you know, that's where you, you want to be or, or, or are as a, as a player. Obviously, those teams are... Uh, those teams are great because, uh, um, you know, good, good clubs that um, yeah, I think yeah, lots of people would love to be at. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm open, you know, I'm, I'm not in a rush to make decisions and, and oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. I'm, I'm very focused on, uh, I want to become a good coach. I want to become the best coach that I can be. And where that falls, it could be because, listen, I understand I ended up being in Maccabi, Tel Aviv, and I ended up the other side of the world and playing in a few different countries and, and coaching in different countries as well now. And, and I understand that in football, sometimes you don't know the direction always. You don't know. And that's, that's OK. You know, you don't always know the direction that you're going to end up in this and that, and this job and do that, whatever. You don't always know what you can control of. Um, or, or be in control of the best is is how you're going to be you know and um, I have a lot of ideas I had a lot of ideas when I was playing I was very curious I played with some under uh, lots of good people and good managers but I want to uh, I would like to contribute and be in a place where I can I can really show a lot of good ideas and where that is you never quite know and uh, I think that's the point that I'm getting at you never quite know so we'll We'll see, and we'll see where that is. But um, but I think doing my licenses and you know licenses are not everything because it always comes down to who you are and the experience and the ideas that you have. That's always going to be the case. The the licenses are secondary, and I think it's great to do them, and I I've enjoyed doing them as well. But um, the, but you never quite know where that could take you. Um, especially football now is is fastly becoming a more connected globally sport than, than even before, you know? So we'll, we'll see, we'll see. But I enjoy coaching though. I enjoy coaching. A lot of people say, you know, is it, you know, like, what do you do? Like you, do you train? Is, is it hard? It is hard. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, you're, you know, sometimes if you're there at 8am or 7am or whatever time it is, and then you're sometimes you leave at four o'clock, five o'clock in Vancouver, I used to sometimes go there at, you know, eight, nine o'clock or something. And we training at three o'clock. I used to leave at like seven o'clock <laughs> at night. So, you know, but the whole day is filled with different things. But also I enjoy some of the things that I get to spend time learning. You know, sometimes I'll, I'll stay and do a few hours or watch video, or watch this, watch games. There's always so many things that you're constantly trying to add as a coach, I think that's the interesting thing is when you're playing is different. When you when you're a coach, there's so many other factors and life skills that come into you being that coach. You know, so it's it's very very different and interesting. Finally, I just want to end. I know it's been a very long chat, um, a very very interesting chat, obviously. But if you had to pick one, you've got to pick one this time. Uh, what would you say <laughs> is your best footballing memory? Best footballing memory, if I had to pick one, if... <laughs> You've got to pick one. Uh, I would say Germany, uh, playing Germany at home, uh, my Wales debut. Uh, 2002, uh, we played Germany just before the World Cup. And uh, we had a friendly at, uh, at the Millennium Stadium Principality, now it's called. Uh, and I made my debut. And um, I think that's probably the best because making your debut, but also it's Germany. Two months later, they went on to go to the final of the World Cup final. But we beat them 1-0 and I scored the goal and scored the winner. 
And um, I think that memory is, is the one I would, I would definitely pick because it's, it was so special, but such a, so big because how many times do you beat Germany, <laughs> you know? And how many times do you score the winner against Germany? So I definitely pick that one. That's probably the, the most memorable and favourite. So what an end to the, the podcast. It's been a, <laughs> you know, a fantastic insight into what it's like being a football at international level, at EFL level, um, at Premier League level. Um, Robert Earnshaw, thank you very much for your time and uh, stay safe. And good luck in your uh, future coaching career. Let's hope uh, yeah. we, we see you soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me.